Welcome back, guys. Today, my guest, I'm super excited to talk about him. You guys have heard me mention him before several times. This man is an artist, he's a philosopher, he's into psychology, and he has gone incredibly viral on TikTok and on YouTube. Please welcome Ho Math. What's going on, brother? Hey, good to be here. Awesome. Thanks for having me. For sure, for sure, man. I'm glad we were able to collab and get this thing done. Uh, I've been watching your content. I use, what, one of the things I, I wanna say, uh, first off, is you know a lot of times in, in my content, I try to explain concept, complicated concepts in evolutionary psychology, and mm -hmm. you break them down in a very, very simple way that yeah. even my girlfriend like really appreciates and, and enjoys. Uh, and yep. so that's really been beneficial, especially like whenever I try to, when I have a client and I'm trying to explain attraction triggers, your little diagram of attraction triggers for bad guy versus yeah. good guy is so yep. incredibly helpful. So I would highly recommend you guys like check all this stuff out. And you have PDFs for all this stuff, right? On your link tree? Yeah, it's, I have PDFs of, uh, I, I'm working on making this particular thing and other things more accessible. Right now they're on my Patreon. So if you subscribe five bucks a month on Patreon, you can get access to anything I've ever drawn for the channel. Beautiful. I'm working on getting these up in PDF format. I have uh, other diagrams that are available for free because I did not create them. I'm working on it. It's still like uh, month four, so still building. I'm literally, my girlfriend and I are literally at dinner with this girl and she's having trouble with dudes or whatever. And she's describing yeah. it to me and I'm explaining, I'm explaining, you know, keeper, sleeper and sweeper to yeah. her like right there. And then I, then I give her your video. So I think what, what's happened yeah, is sure. you, you a really, really great way to explain a lot of these more complicated concepts. So the first thing I want to ask you is where did this start? Obviously I'm guessing you have a background in art, uh, in, in drawing. So how did this start for you? Or was it something else you were drawing? How, how did we get to this point? I don't really have a background in drawing. I, I appreciate it so much that people compliment my art. I have a background mainly in writing and I've done some journalism, uh, communications work, um, you know, desk jobs, that sort of thing. Not very many of them. Uh, art, I was good at it in high school. I haven't really drawn since then. Mostly my background is in, uh, I went to grad school for developmental psychology and I use something called the Aqual Integral Map. That's A-Q-A-L. I don't think I have it. I don't think I have it printed out. Uh, you know, these are the things that I draw. Uh, these are my creations. Aqual is from a guy named Ken Wilbur, who uh, created something called integral theory. Um, and I have uh, education that includes that. So I use that as the lens through which I explain all these things. What I try to do is I use my personal, you know, development yeah, sure. and my education and uh, my ability to, I guess, my art ability, which people insist that I have, to just break down what is going on in the human mind to individual traits and properties that can be worked on individually. So if you are, if you find yourself being treated a certain way by women, all you have to do is go, well, I don't have enough of this or this, and I need to work on that in order to be liked better in this way. Or if, you know, I've been caught in this area before where women will uh, feel that way about me, but don't want long-term. Well, it's because they don't want to be seen with me. I don't have my life together. I don't have enough to invest in them. Then you want to work on that and get that together. I'm just trying to break things down to be very simple and very easily visible so that people don't have to keep being lost about dating and various, you know, social things that we do. For sure. I, so I run a sales team and we have something very similar, or if you've ever read any Jordan Belfort stuff, he has like, if you're getting this, then it's probably because you don't have enough of this. So I definitely, yeah. I definitely understand. And I love the way these charts are set up. What started it for you though? What were the first illustrations that you did? What was it? Was it TikTok first? Was it YouTube first? What started was, this, this journey for you? It was, it was TikTok first. And it was a really, really crappy version of this where I just did it in, in ballpoint pen. I scribbled really quickly. There was a, a girl made a video where she said, uh, men with no hoes, where are you? You know, what are you doing? And I just scribbled quickly 10 men and 10 women. And I said, the, the, the men with hoes are up here receiving attention from you and all of the other hoes. And the men without hoes are down here trying to contact you on Bumble and you are not responding. And that video blew up. It got 3.8 million views. It still has more hits than any of my other videos. That's crazy. And I just built a channel off of it in four months and I'm already making a living. So it's just like when you're good at something, I guess it works. 
That's awesome, man. Yeah, that was the first video I saw, and I was like, man, that's very concise. And my favorite part is hope that helps at the end. I've been doing that yeah. a lot of time uh, for YouTube commenters. I, I like explain to them why they're wrong, and then I'm like, hope that helps. I, I Absolutely. Um, yeah. so, so that so that's the first one that took off for you. Uh, since yeah. then, your necessity for secrecy is it because you work in academia? Is you don't want to get canceled, or mm. you just? I generally just kind of don't like the way that people treat each other. Okay, this was the my second thing that got big, by the way. Um, I just don't don't really like. I lived in a major city for quite a while, uh, and I saw up close the way that people would. Um, treat you if you have even subtle disagreements with them about certain yes. things. And if I want to build a career off of this, like I, I, I saw it, correct me if I'm wrong, but didn't Tim pool have the SWAT team come to his house several times because uh, people pranked him? Yeah. Well, it, Aiden Ross was kind of the big one. Tim pool, I think did too, but it was uh, yeah. there's streamers that'll do that for each other where they disagree with each other and they'll, they'll SWAT each other. You'll call, you know, someone's address. So you say, Hey, there's yeah. a bomb threat there from a, like a payphone or something. Yeah. And that's dangerous. Because you can get like that's the SWAT team. They're mm -hmm. not. They're not there to arm wrestle. So I. I just. I don't want anybody to. I don't want to interact with anyone on that level. I just want to say what I have to say and collect the money and go move to a mountain in Colorado or something. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Beautiful. And then could you describe for my most of my audience is going to know who you are, but for the people who don't know who you are what is the overall message about is it a crisis in dating where does the what is the overall message that you you're trying to get out there the overall message is there's a crisis in civilization and i'm coming at it through dating because i have a lot of personal experience with it like this is based on not just reading and you know science and data but also there's a lot of you know we're gonna i think you you said you want to talk about mac and murphy at some point sure. I, I had an argument with him and he is a scientist. He has access to lots of data, but I don't agree with him about some of the ways that he interprets it. Like, for example, he said that uh, women uh, cheat less than men, which we know because women say they cheat less than men, but they they don't do the same thing with uh, mate stealing. Yes. And he said, well, why would they lie about one and not the other? And that my answer for that is that those are two entirely different emotional experiences yeah that's like two entirely different emotional landscapes like of course they're gonna lie they're also two, about them. they're also two different moral uh positions because this is exactly. uh, as soon as i as soon as i heard that i because it came to me what happens is when you're stealing a mate it's it's mm -hmm. a woman who is single a man who is what well, maybe wealthier more established comes up to him and says i'd like to date you she doesn't know yeah. he's married and then at some point like he and she ends up like taking over like you know stealing the husband okay in that yeah. case she is she is doing something, but it's not nefarious. It's negligence. She didn't know mm -hmm. a lot of times when you're cheating though, that is nefarious. Meaning you knew what your actions yeah. were in the beginning. So I disagree again. I agree with you and I disagree with Mac and I do believe women would be more, uh, not, not proud, but less ashamed of the concept of a man chose me over his wife and more ashamed of the concept of I cheated on my boyfriend because then that makes her a worse, uh, a worse bet for paternity. Like that makes her of actually course. probably a less likely mate. So if I'm a high status man and I find that other men are like trying to pursue you and like leave their wives for you, that doesn't make you look worse to me as a woman. But if you are specifically cheating on your man regularly, that's completely different. That's what I thought whenever I saw it, when I heard that argument. Yeah, yeah, of course. That's exactly how I feel about it. So the way that I'm coming at it is uh, I think that I have, you know, I think I have certain a certain skill set that can make these things accessible to more people. Because if you describe something over and over and you use words over and over, a lot of people are going to tune out. If you make it colorful and fun and you make jokes and you visualize it, a, a much higher number of people are going to be able to access the ideas. That's what I really want to do. And the reason I want to do that is because when you add all these things up, when you put together everything that I'm trying to describe here, um, I have yet to make a video about this, but this is going to be important too. When you put together everything that I'm trying to describe, it paints a picture of people are changing mentally. And that's what, like why I use the Aqua integral map. I, I believe that people are developmentally lower than they used to be mm. because we are living in conditions that don't require us to think very deeply about ourselves and about our lives. And there's so much instant gratification that, for example, I made this ick indicator and it's just like a, just a general way to tell like if, if it's you or if it's her, the lower down you go, the more it's like, get rid of her because she's just icked out by everything. Sure. Like wearing a raincoat. Um, 
I believe that the reason that the ick is trending is because women have always felt that way about their partners, about their boyfriends and their husbands, but they used to just be more able to say, well, that's normal to feel that way. And I still like him. And now lately they're just saying, I feel something. I better just act on it. Could and it that's al- a low, as a lower level of development. I think. Could it also be because we come from a different environment? So you go back a hundred years and like maybe 200 years and then maybe a thousand years, men and women kind of needed each other more. So the fact that my husband who provides for me and we live on this farm together, I have an ick for him. Maybe it doesn't quite manifest to the same level it does now because a woman may make 300,000 years, uh, $300,000 a year and own a Glock. She doesn't need a man for the same necessities. And that may cause the manifestation of the ick. We're, yes, further, I think we're further away from a survival scenario is what I'm saying. Yeah, we're further away from a survival scenario, and it's not just further away from survival. It's also like it's kind of artificial. I made I made a bunch of uh, you know videos about money recently. It's it, to some degree, and you know I don't know the extent, but it seems to be pretty heavy extent to me. The the government is involved in collecting taxes unevenly from men and women and distributing benefits unevenly towards women. There's a lot of benefits that come directly from the government or come through corporations where, you know, subsidies will pay for certain job benefits. And, you know, women are 60% of college graduates now, I think. Yes. And there, there's, I don't, I don't think uh, that's hi- just it's because higher than they, that. there's 60% of enrollment and graduates. It's closer to 68%. Oh, wow. Yeah. So I don't, I don't think that that's just because they got m- more motivated than men. I think it's because there's a lot more benefits being yes, offered and a lot of fewer nine, there. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. And, yeah. The for, and, and what you're saying before, the forgiveness of student debt loan, which was which proposed under the Biden administration, would benefit women disproportionately at one standard deviation, 68 percent, more men more than women or women more yeah. than men. Yeah. Right. So it's kind of like what we used to do is we used to go to work and pay for women directly and they would have relationships with us and then you'd have both parents raising the child, which is the optimal, you know, outcome for the child. And now what we have is the government sort of taking from men and giving to women and they go, well, I don't need no man, but you actually need all men because that's where a lot of this value is coming from, from them doing the work. And you occasionally will get women making arguments like, men could just disappear and everything would be fine because they're not conscious that we're men are fixing the sewers and building the roads and everything. And it's that lack of awareness of the situation that I'm trying to work directly on the, the, the lack of understanding that, that this kind of redistribution, it's not ultimately good for us. So you, you might have women saying I'm independent. I have a job. I have a Glock. I live alone. I don't need a man, but the detrimental effects upon men are kind of leading to a rotting out of the bottom of society that's going to be bad for everybody. And so you, you're, pro- you're referring to, and even Mack and Murphy talked about this, about the third of men that do not get to participate in short-term mating. And I thought that was a, right. another really interesting uh, discussion, mainly because what one of the things he said, and I, this is probably the, the thing that got me riled up the most, was short-term dating versus long-term dating. And you talk about the concept of a familiar environment versus an unfamiliar environment, unfamiliar environment, yeah. how women push men's attractiveness levels to the left and familiar yeah. environment, it's different. But then Mac and Murphy talked about in short-term dating, about a third of men are not going to be able to participate, but yeah. it, this is his, his exact words, but there's good news. And the good mm-hmm. news is that things distribute more evenly in a long-term dating dating scenario, but which isn't happening anymore, right? Well, it's not only is it not happening, the new GSS data that came out that Mackin and, uh, and fucking date psych are not, you know, not, uh, well, date site actually put something out recently saying that there's more nuance that needs to be added to it, but it clearly shows in this one study that, th- that women who cheated had 230% the sexual partners of women who didn't cheat in a relationship. Have you seen that one? Yeah. It's a GSS one with 7,000. It's 7,000 yeah. women that they, they surveyed back in 2021. And so it, what it does is it shows a direct correlation between promiscuity and uh, difficulty to stay in a relationship. But remember promiscuity happens before the marriage. That's the short term dating market. The marriage is now the long-term dating market. So what's what's happened in the short-term dating market is now affecting my long-term dating. So that's not yep. good news. You see what I'm saying? And I felt like yes, he, of course. He he misses Mac. And I'm I'm trying to be as honest as I can. I'm not trying to make any kind of personal attack, but like I feel sure. like he deliberately misses this concept because yeah. in that way. And the other thing is, and I'm just going to say this. 
you know, Mackin and, and Date and uh, Date's like and fucking Chris Williamson for that matter are super good looking dudes who probably had mm -hmm. no trouble with women and are looking yep. at this through the lens of what they're doing. And by the way, Mackin yeah. is a boxer with tattoo sleeves. Like, bro, I, yeah. I just it, and then he's looking at the world through that place. And then when he says a third of men are not going to participate in the short term dating market and then he brushes over it, I'm like, I, I'm a dude who has a lot of success with dating and I don't want to brush over that because I was a U.S. military member where there's a mm -hmm. disproportionately high number of men taking their own lives. And this was a yeah. problem that I saw. And when I see, you know, when a man uh, is divorced after the age of 40, if he's zeroed out financially, he has a nine times higher likelihood of taking his own life uh, than yeah. the general population. And I see this as an issue. So the short term dating inequity is part of the issue, which can go back to what you said before about the distribution of, of wealth, which causes women to like, like uh, as women climb the socioeconomic ladder, they want men who make even more money than them. I believe the number was yeah. 1.68 to one. So if a woman yeah. makes a hundred thousand, she wants a man who makes 168,000, something, something somewhere yeah. around that line on average. And so these short term dating things, become a problem in long-term dating. It's like saying I dated, there was a woman and in her short-term dating past, she caught a disease that she can't get rid of, but now I'm dating her long-term and it's after she caught the disease, so I'm fine. No, that that comes along with you into long-term yeah. and, it, and it causes damage. So that that's one of the points that he kind of seemed to gloss over when we were having, when you guys were having that discussion. He, he does seem to gloss over it. I've spoken to him at length uh, uh, privately and I, I, I like Mackin. I think he's, I don't think that he's deliberate Deliberately missing it. If he is deliberately glossing over that, he's uh, like trained by the CIA. Yes, yeah. he, he's he's a, a nice guy. He's a smart guy, but I do think that he is glossing over it, and I think that it's just because the human mind has a really remarkable power to see things the way they want to see them. Well, and and the way that you you're the human mind will see things. Like for instance, I grew up in Texas, and I'm a fan of the University of Texas at Austin, right? Like yeah. my heuristics or my beliefs are painted because of the stimulus that I receive. And I'm just pointing out once again, he got, went to Oxford, tattoo sleeves, good looking guy saying mm -hmm. that thir a third of men are not participating in short term dating when he probably was. I think that yeah. that that sort of adds to the bias. Yeah, of course, of course. And that's something that we you know, we could get into the psychology of it, which I, I, I do um, personal life coaching as mm -hmm. well, which is a, a part of my whole suite of offerings. And I offered to give him a session for free. And he was like, what if that got out? And what, I mean, I don't know. It was like, it, it, it was, he, he turned me down in a polite way, but it was like, what I was trying to get at was why is it that you are accusing me of bias when I also don't get to talk to you about like maybe the way that you are seeing it is biased. That's what I really am trying to strike at. Like that dark part of the mind where people don't see their own way of seeing is really what I'm trying to get at with yes. all of this, yeah. all of this stuff. And you talk and, about shadow work, which I thought was, that was, that was the yeah. reason why I wanted to interview you, by the way, is the oh, concept awesome. of thinking about thinking about thinking, how yeah. incredibly important that is. And because yes. in this space, especially on YouTube, we insult each other. Uh, we go at each other's neck and, it, and I've really we been do. trying, I've really been trying to avoid that. Um, the other thing uh, I wanted to bring up was this concept where, where because the, the reason why I want this discussion to happen, and that's between all of us, is because specifically when we're dealing with, like, say, Mackin and Dates, like, these guys are academics. They have access to more data than we do. I want them yeah. to be a part of the discussion. I think it's very important yeah. that they are. I don't want them silenced. Absolutely. I want them as much as, as we can. But the issue is because they come from academi academia, one of the issues is we all know, this is not a secret, academia tends to lean a little bit more progressive. And in progressive mm -hmm. circles, women are a protected class and men are a privileged class. And so yeah. if I were hypothetically to say, hey, Mackin, uh, do you think the fact that men go on to uh, you know, OnlyFans and write women repeatedly, expecting these women to write back and have feelings for them, do you think that's delusional? And he'd probably be like, yeah, that's delusional. Hey, do you think that mm -hmm. when guys go to comment on Fresh and Fit or whatever podcast or my podcast, and they go on there, these women are 304s, and, you, and obviously these guys could never date these women, you think that's delusional? He'd be like, yeah, that's delusional. Okay. I was like, also, mm -hmm. when women say 80% of men are below average attractiveness, is that delusional? No, that's not delusional. That's mm. why, how is that delusion? And so my point is, I think you and I both criticize men and women and yeah. in his, his circle, I think for him to be accepted in academia, he has, he cannot criticize women. And because of that, that's when I hear some of these statements and I'm like, he, he, he sort of straw mans the red pill to where it's say, and by the way, I'm not red pill, I'm red pill adjacent. Like I'm friends with Willow, sure. but 
he straw mans the red pill into say red pill says five percent of men are fucking 90 percent of the women that is not what red pill guys are saying and he's yeah. saying something to the effect of of red pill guys only hold women accountable and not men and that's not true i hear even myron Gaines hold men accountable often and those clips don't mm -hmm. go viral that's the difference yeah those clips yeah. do not go the algorithm doesn't love those clips when i tell men there's always more you don't deserve shit you're gonna have to work for it there are no special snowflakes and no one's coming to save you those clips yeah. do not go as viral as 304 feminist modern woman gets destroyed by you know so yeah. by the red pill those clips go incredibly viral yeah exactly I, I hold men's feet to the fire too my entire next video is about how you know that we don't we just don't do this very much anymore we don't get familiar with each other yes we are all meeting on apps no one knows anyone and in those conditions whether you're in an app or you know meeting at a concert or whatever women are all going to be turning their eyes towards just the top few men in the room and so your only option is to appear like one of those and that's like my whole next video which is probably going to be an hour long or something is it's going to be it's it's geared towards women too it's called self maximize and it's just about how to make yourself the best you possibly can be in the eyes of the people that you like. And the, the message to men is you don't have any power to make women stop thinking this way. Mm. You only have power to move up in their eyes. And here's how you do it bit by bit, bit by bit by bit. Here's what you have to do to become what they want. Um, and yeah, I, I definitely feel what you said about there was something about how how I'm trying to remember a quote from Integral Theory, which I've read a lot about, and I'm trying to get into the public discourse a little bit more. The Integral Theory people have been contacting me, by the way, and they're giving me a thumbs up on my on how I'm doing. So that makes me really That's happy. Great. Yes, I love it. And there was a quote from there about spiral dynamics and something. I don't remember who it was. It was somebody believed that their model was the entirety of reality instead of the Aquamap because their money depended on it. So if your acceptance in academia, like Mackin or whoever, or, or your job depends on you following the orthodoxy, that's going to, uh, that's going to affect your beliefs. It's going to, if you're not thinking about why am I believing this, then you're going to believe things that might not be yeah. and what let, you should believe. Let me point this out. Both, both Alex and Mackin are currently still involved in research, meaning there's still, there is a certain extent of their resources that are tied to academia for them to go yeah. around calling women delusional, they would probably lose their standing. I don't know. I, I don't know if they're, you know, PhD candidates or what the specific situation is. So I'm not blaming them. I understand. But the thing is, uh, I think that they, I would call that out if I were them. I'd be like, hey, you know, there's certain things that we can't talk about or whatever. Uh, just like you said yeah. with the integral theory, I had Dr. Buss on my, Dr. David Buss on my show. He and awesome. I agreed on 100% of everything. I learned a ton from him. I, I see him as a mentor. He's incredible. Uh, so I feel the same way. It's like I'm trying to teach evolutionary psychology or concepts in evolutionary psychology and then apply them to real world uh, dynamics. I have 700 clients right now. And when we go through and we look at everything through an evolutionary lens, we tend to find the right answer. So you were showing the hypergamy chart earlier. If, I don't mm -hmm. know if you can go back to that real quick. This yeah. is something I absolutely love. So just so we just so we're clear, here we are on the uh, we're going to hold men's feet to the fire. That hypergamy absolutely. chart over there on the right there, that is something that is baked in evolution. 178 million years of mammalian yeah. evolution, 3 million years of hominid evolution, 200,000 years of homo sapien evolution has created that chart. You aren't going to change that. Significant changes in the phenotype are going to take something like 40,000 generations. Men, women will continue to look for better uh, mates f for as long as we're alive and probably for the next several hundred to thousand years. Maybe if we have a, a group of humans that bifurcate and move over to Mars and they have a different yeah. sexual structure or arranged marriages, yeah. maybe we get rid of hypergamy in that society. But for yeah. our society, hypergamy is something that's very, very uh, pervasive and anything that is pervasive amongst homo sapiens must exist somewhere in evolution. And so that's yeah. the thing. So we don't blame women because they want better men. But we also right. need to understand that their exposure to limitless images of men that look better and are richer than their current partner yeah. have caused them to um, look at the average man and push him down to the left. It is a combination yeah. of she does not need him financially. She does not need him for provisioning or providing or protection. In addition, exactly. she's constantly looking at images of roided up dudes with tattoo sleeves you know, named, named Carlo that send her yeah. DMs and it pushes all of the men on the average scale to the left.
Additionally, yeah. I don't know if you've seen that clip of one of the guys who's a developer for a dating app and he goes, man, the math is really bad here. What happens yeah. is women will go on there and they'll swipe left hundreds of times believing that they have options with all these men for long-term dating yeah. success. And in reality, you, have you, you've used the delusional calculator? The That's female? the delusion. Yeah. Have you seen the female delusional calculator? Uh, I have seen it, yeah, where they you, you punch in what they expect and they tell you what percentage of the population. Yeah, so, so just, just yeah. quick and dirty here, 14% of the population is over 6 feet tall. 17% of the yeah. population makes 100,000 a year. So it's not 14% and 17%. It's 14% times yeah. 17%, which is 2.3%. Yeah. That does not yeah. control for age. It does not control for obesity. It does not control for marriage. And it does not control for physical attractiveness. Yikes. If you control for yeah. those, those first three, you get to 0.02% of the population that are not yeah. obese, not not married between like say 30 and 45 uh, and make over a hundred thousand dollars a year and over six feet tall. We're talking 0 0.02. When we yeah. do the con when we do the contrapositive, when we ever, we have men in here and we say, what do you like? Because we, as men do not care about height and we do not care about income. We, the, the amount of women that are available to us is far greater. And because we yeah. normally distribute what we find women to be attractive, fives or fives, sixes or sixes, sevens or sevens. Exactly. But, but again, it does happen with men too. If you grow up and if you're in Bel Air and you're constantly around beautiful women, then what happens mm -hmm. is nines becomes eights for sure. But nines don't become twos. That's the difference. We right. still, and by the way, men will see a woman who's a six, think she's a five and still have sex with her. That's the difference. Yeah. Right. So that, and that's, it goes the other way around with yes. men too. Yeah, it does so, too. If some, you, if, some men yeah, overvalue when women. I, when yeah. I was living in Wichita, Kansas, or when I was stationed in the Middle East for 10 months, I would come yeah. back and a five became an eight to me very quickly. Yeah. For sure. That thing is very expandable and stretchable for us. But for the most part, it's a normal distribution. It's a bell uh -huh. curve when it comes to men rating women's physical attractiveness. And it doesn't happen the same way for women. And the reason why that is that you alluded to Mackin and he said this might be the case, but it pr pretty clearly is the case, yeah. is the concept of social media, specifically the internet, then social media is the reason why they keep the, you know, the, there's the one chart that shows the number of men having zero sexual partners in the last year at, it goes from 2008. It's like 16% and it goes up to 28% at 2018. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that is 2008 is the advent of the, is the iPhone. And then the Facebook app on the iPhone, then creating yep. that mismatch along with online dating. That is the reason, regardless of what they want to try to tell you it is yep. social media has caused an, a massive, there was already, a, there's already some mismatch when it comes to short-term dating, but that mismatch in short-term dating has been exacerbated because women now have, they can touch, they have access to the shortstop, the power forward, the country singer yep. and the movie star. And who, and, and by the way, I know dozens of girls who've actually hooked up with Drake, like actually <laughs> fucked Drake, Drake, they fucked oh, yeah. Drake. And then from their mind, what happens is their boyfriend cannot even begin to compare. And another concept that I love that you talk about is women getting stuck on their highest setting. I, yeah. I, the way you describe it is perfect. Yeah. Yeah. I've got a, a depiction of the ick here where she's just got the phone looking at this guy and everyone else looks like that. Uh, yeah. Getting stuck on the highest setting is, you know, because of the access to men that they have through technology and the attention that they're getting, which like women are kind of getting their, their reptile brains stretched out by all the attention. They all think that they're, I've just met so many girls who I, I used to, uh, I used to know someone who, was hung, she hung out with me all the time. We were not dating and people thought we were dating. And she said to me one day, she made a face like this. And she was like, why do people think we're dating? And I said, Oh, because we look like we're dating. And she was like, really you and me. And I said, which one of us do you think is the more attractive? And she went me. And I said, Oh, okay. What do you think you are? And she said, Oh, a nine. Like, I think I'm a nine. And it just wasn't even close. Like I, I wouldn't have looked twice at her. She's an okay looking girl. There's nothing wrong with her, but she, was getting so much of this that she thought that she was a movie star. And um, they they feel that way about themselves, and then they actually get an opportunity because all these men will have short-term relationships with all these women. They get the opportunity, and in, in her mind, she thinks, I almost got married, which is the delusion. That's what I'm talking about with the standard female delusion chart. The delusion is this guy almost proposed to me. And then they consider all the rest of the men, uh, you know, beneath them. So getting stuck on the highest setting, viewing every other man in the world like this, it's, it's based on these experiences that they're having 
not only just viewing these men on their phones, but also getting to meet them and have actual experiences with them. Like not everyone is going to be Drake. I, you know, I'm not all that familiar with Drake, but I know he's a rich and famous guy. And that's not an experience that can he, be replicated he's, by he's John He's the Average. top of the hypergamy of the social media hypergamy chart. He, Drake. Sure, yeah. Chris, so he's Chris, way he's up Chris Hemsworth, uh, what's the guy's, uh, uh, Jason Momoa and Drake, that's the top of the hypergamy chart. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yes. I know, I'm, uh, I know Jason Momoa, so yeah. I got it. So, yeah. So, I just, I don't know how we're going to be able to do it because we're going to have to fundamentally change how technology works. But if we keep allowing this to take place and we don't find a way to move back towards this, then a huge portion of men are going to be disenfranchised and they're not going to be motivated to do anything. And then society is going to rot out. Yeah. And specifically when you talk society rotting out, there are numerous studies that show that in polygynous societies, you have a higher likelihood for violence. So this is places yeah. like where men can have multiple wives and you'll see this in places like India or Afghanistan. When that happens, you have a large group of men that have no a chance at the bottom. They have no chance financially or relationship yep. wise. And then this is when you see individuals strap bombs to themselves, like, or shoot yep. up, shoot up locations. That's where this kind of thing happens. So you see more violence in polygynous situations when there's a c encouraged monogamy. Like, well, again, mm -hmm. that's what the Protestant reformation was encouraged monogamy through Catholicism and, and that those kind of things. What you find is that even the men in the lowest quartile of men, they they were still in arranged marriages. They had one sexual partner that allowed them to have children and offspring, which put yeah. them in a, a, again, children, offspring, a farm and cattle to take care of. I'm far less likely to be violent and to commit a revolution. And so we have yeah. safer society. These are massive generalizations, but that's in general yeah. what you're talking about with, with a disgruntled group of men down there at the bottom. Yeah, exactly. And if we, if we do that, if we have some kind of social, uh, you know, force that, it encourages or I mean requires is a strong word. But if you have some kind of social force that that makes us closer to this, where people match up one to one, or at least somewhere in between this, the full blown hypergamy and and this, you've got to keep a certain percentage of men motivated and happy. And and every day it's less and less. And I think you know you said it's a huge generalization, but I think it's a strong generalization. Yeah. I think it's a very common commonly self-replicating generalization that the more like the higher these lines go, the more they point towards the top, the more these guys check out and start burning things down. There's a, a one of those old proverbs that's, you know, one of those apocryphal proverbs that uh, uh, the child who doesn't feel the warmth of the village will burn it down to feel its warmth or something. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, no, exactly. So, I mean, and we we see, like, we see yeah. numerous we see numerous examples of that, especially in countries like I said before, where bigamy is allowed, where men can take yeah. multiple wives. You're going to have men that, like, say, grow up in India, and their only possibility of having any sexual intercourse is probably with a prostitute. Though I've talked to men in the in these situations, there's just because of the caste system there. There's a group of men that are completely left out. Can we go back to the yeah. hypergamy chart real quick? I want to point out one yeah. other thing that Mackin said when he remember he was blaming the men of look at the chart over there on the right. He was blaming mm -hmm. those men at the top. Do you remember that? He goes, the reason yeah. why hypergamy exists because of because those men. Because they cheat. Because yeah. they cheat. Now, th let's go to what the actual numbers say. On In an unfamiliar scenario, which that's just determining in dating apps, 80% of men are deemed to be unattractive or below average attractiveness. 20% of men are deemed to be attractive, but four and a half percent of men, which is outside of one standard deviation. Remember, two standard deviations yeah. is 95.5%. So outside uh -huh. of that, that four and a half percent are deemed to be so attractive that women will pursue them. And yes, yeah. I do blame those men. So what I'm blaming is four and a half percent of men and 80% of women. Yeah. That's where I had an issue. Yes. Do I want to, can you blame men for this? Of course. But can you, oh, yeah. but, but again, the, the problem with when you want to blame men for that, you're blaming four and a half percent of men. That's exactly yep. right. Is it true that four and a half percent of men are doing this? For sure. I have, I have several friends. Um, there's one girl I know she was on, uh, she went on tour with machine gun Kelly and she said mm -hmm. after every machine gun Kelly, again, this is anecdotal. It's just one story, but after every show machine gun Kelly would then go have sex with like 30 girls. They'd have an orgy afterwards. They get all the groupie yep. back there. She said she would have sex with the girls. This girl told me she had caught chlamydia several times from doing this. Yep. It was just machine gun Kelly and a bunch of these women. He would do it yep. over and over again. She finally left the group by the way, when her birthday came and he didn't even know her birthday. That's when she finally yeah. like up and left. But she yeah. tells me this story. And then I, you know, so Machine Gun Kelly, let's just say he's been with a thousand or 2000 women. He still sure. gets chosen by Megan Fox. I think that's an important, important thing. Cause we're going to talk about promiscuity and men promiscuity and women and the way it's viewed. Yeah. 
But mm-hmm. going back to what I'm saying before, there's these men at the top that can do this. And what my point is, and what you've said before, is every one of these women, there's probably several women that have been to orgies with Machine Gun Kelly and tell their friends yeah. they dated him, quote unquote, oh, sure. dated him. And yeah. then now they're stuck at their highest setting. So do I yes. blame men? I will blame four and a half percent of men, but I will blame a yeah. much greater per- portion of women for the hypergamy chart than I do men. And I actually, to be fair, I don't yeah. blame either one of them because I think it's a function of evolution. It is a function of evolution. And I, you know, I, I am just going by what women told me. I, I have been told that at my peak that I was, you know, a lot of women said eight. I drew a picture of myself back then. Um, when I was here, I took advantage of it. And I just thought that everyone was, I thought everyone was doing this. I thought everyone was sleeping with everyone because that's just like the age that we live in. And it really just wasn't true. I was getting with, you know, few women up here and loads of women in this area. And I just, I went crazy with it. I was in a much lower uh, station earlier in life. And when I made it up here, I took full advantage of it. And now looking back at it, it's like, oh, I probably let, like there were, there were girls who would text me a year and a half after I saw them and say that they still thought of me. And that was me leaving her on her highest setting. Mm -hmm. So I, I participated in that and I don't feel good about it. And I'm trying to tell men, you know, even if you can, maybe don't, maybe it's not good for you. Maybe don't put women here. Even if you have the option to, I know that they're going to anyway, because it's just, it's like an irresistible thing that's built into us, but maybe, maybe some people will listen to me and reduce it and just wait for somebody who wants to be here and puts him in, in one of the, these upper areas. Yeah. Uh, the Institute for Family Studies has this one study. It's uh, Does Sexual History Affect Marital Happiness? And I'm just going to read a quote from it. Uh, multiple yeah. sex partners prior to marriage reduced marital quality, quality for women, but not for men. Um, this is one of the things that I've noticed. So when we talk about promiscuity, I agree with you. And so, and you know, a lot of other people, you think promiscuity overall is bad. And I agree. Mm-hmm. I just think that it's much worse for women. And I think the data shows that. I think so. I think that it's psychologically worse for women. I definitely feel a little bit of an effect from what, from my, my days of living that way. I'm not yes. sure if I'm going to be able to find the, 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 picture of it. But I, I definitely feel a little bit of effect of like losing faith in women because I saw what they would do. Like I would meet a girl online and she would show up with a wedding ring and I would be like, really? And you know, how do I know that that's not going to be my wife? And it would, it would build up a little bit in me over time and harm my attitudes and make me less likely to form a long-term bond, less likely to form a healthy long-term bond. But I think that same kind of feeling is much more intensified in women for obvious reasons that they're much more emotional and they get attached much more easily. Like they get stuck on their highest setting. That's them getting emotionally attached. They're saying, this is the kind of man for me now and no one else will, will do that. And that's, uh, it's just like this immediate effect that is permanent in, in some cases that makes them dissatisfied with their, like a, a woman who meets Machine Gun Kelly will then get married to a guy on her level and never really like him and be thinking about him forever. Yeah. No, she still thinks about him too. She does. Yeah. It's funny. Um, so I want to talk about this because this is uh, kind of leading into the, a similar situation. You talked about a friend you had and your friend mm-hmm. and other people would say, uh, are you guys dating? Can we talk yep. about mate choice copying? Uh, this specifically yeah. because it comes from evolutionary biology and it's discussed in evolutionary sure. psychology. Mate choice copying is one of the key tenets that I teach when it comes to male female attraction because I can't make men taller and I can't make their eyes blue. But one thing yeah. I can do very quickly in the short term is show a lot of compliance from attractive women for a man. And there's a lot of different ways to do that. So can you talk about this concept first and then I just, I'm just kind of curious of what your opinion is about different things. Yeah, sure. So uh, this is just a, a visualization for a video I made about it. The first time that it ever really hit me, like earlier in my life, I had a friend who had girls fighting over him and I didn't understand it because I was like, no one's, you don't need to fight over me. But it was actually attractive to them that they had to fight over him because he was popular. That didn't make sense to me at the time. It started making sense to me when I met somebody who, uh, like we were at a stage in our relationship, we were not using, uh, uh, prophylactics anymore. Mm-hmm. And she found that I had some and guessed that I was uh, saving them for other women and told me that she liked it and found it attractive. And when I processed that and tried to figure out why it was like, Oh, you like it that other women want me. And that makes you prefer being around me as it makes me look stronger to you. It like, it increases, you know, 
other women in, in popularity would increase my score here. Yeah, on the bad boy be, side. That's really important because we yeah. want to get to the bad boy stuff and the good boy stuff. I say attraction and comfort, but your way yeah. of saying bad boy, bad guy and good guy is helpful yeah. for some of my clients because some of for my sure. clients have no bad boy traits when they come to me. Yes. Um, so going back to what, what we said before, that you mentioned in the mate choice copying one, like we don't agree uh, with why women behave this way. Here's a theory it's from evolutionary yeah. biology. It's called sexy son's hypothesis. And the yes. belief is because I, a woman may see a trait that she finds attractive in men, she's going to say, I want that trait in my children. So I'm more likely to breed with that man. So like say for instance, height, a woman finds a man who's tall, attractive. So she's w more w willing to breed with him. Inherently, this is a, on a subconscious level, her hypergamy is saying, or her genetics are giving her a reward for saying, Hey, if we have a, a child with this uh, uh, yeah. person, he'll be, like he'll him, be yeah. tall. And then he'll have they'll more likely to spread his genes and my genetics will get passed on in perpetuity. So that's essentially what's going on there. In this case, yeah. because women, other women have approved of you, that is a sign. And it's not only a bad boy trait, but it's a sign that, that you have a likelihood of being able to pass on your genetics because yeah. those traits, ex those proclivities exist you or because of the manifestation of those genetic qualities exist in you, she now becomes stimulated by you because she now wants the, even though she knows we're, we're, you probably didn't, didn't plan on having kids with her, even though mm -hmm. consciously she knows she's not having kids with you, subconsciously her body is rewarding her for mating with someone who has these genes that may be, that may help her offspring yeah. pass on. Exactly. Yeah. I'm, I'm really glad to hear that. I hadn't heard of the sexy son's hypothesis, but yeah. that was what I came up with when I thought about why that would be, it was like, oh, cause they want that women can't propagate. So they want to have a son that can propagate. Yes. And that's how you measure his ability to do that. Um, I, I spoke about that with Mackin too. I asked him if, you know, if he thought that was the reason he just agreed right away. So he, you know, a lot of the things that, that I find important, um, some of these people do agree with. Well, and, uh, I, I, yeah. I, would, I would tell you if we took a thousand things, uh, yeah. it, like beliefs, and we put Rolla Tomasi, uh, Myron Gaines, Alec Date Psych, and Mac and Murphy, and had them uh, say yes or no on these a thousand things when it comes to intersexual yeah. dynamics, they would agree on 850 of them. Like they oh, sure. actually yeah. agree far more than they disagree. I heard Mac and Murphy talk about promiscuity. I've heard Mac and Murphy talk about several things that where uh, on di on different shows when he's not up against a red pill content creator, he says yeah. things that sound very much like this side of the aisle. But that this yeah. side of the aisle does not help him in academia. That's I think probably maybe where his bias is coming from. It might be that might be exactly it. Yeah. So I don't know how to I don't know how to address that. I'm just looking for my oh there it is. There's my. That's my the the sexy sun's hypothesis that I drew in yeah. the early stages of my. This is when I was still rushing and I hadn't bought colored pencils yet. Um, that was when I drew it out that you know the the bad boy having many sons is what the what she desires. Exactly. So yeah, I don't know I don't know how to address that. I don't know how to how to respond to this idea that that it's institutions that are causing these thoughts to propagate it's it's what's good for the institution which is being i mean it's being managed what on an institutional level on we're, a, talking on about a, uh, we're talking about dating apps and, and and big tech when you say institutions well universities governments okay, got you know, okay the, no we're talking about universities got it yeah yeah, yeah, really any the dating apps too. It's the the way that they're structured promotes certain ideas and certain behavior. And so uh, you know, there are certain things that you're allowed to say and certain things you're not allowed to say. You can get banned for this and that. You can get uh, a, a hate speech violation for saying that hey, I think this is a thing that women do and they go, "Oh, you hate women and you get a community guideline strike or whatever." There's there are forces against the spreading of certain ideas and in favor of other ideas and it seems all in one direction. And I, you know, I, you got to wonder why that would be, uh, what well, is, what exactly is going on there? I, I think, and again, I, I think Mac and Murphy makes really good content, but I think yeah. if you look, he doesn't do as well on YouTube as he does on TikTok. He's, he's like four or 500,000 views on TikTok and on yeah. YouTube, he's getting less than a thousand. Uh, yeah. and the reason I, I noticed this and I always, I look at this for different content creators, I think, and again, this is no, uh, I'm not trying to disparage him at all. Cause I think his content is really good work, yes. uh, but I think that he Agreed. gets a push on TikTok because TikTok was made somewhat of a mockery of by Andrew Tate. I think Andrew Tate goes on the platform. He uses the platform to spread his ideas. His mm -hmm. ideas propagate incredibly fast. He becomes the most Googled person in the world in August of 2022, yep. I believe. And then once he, once he does that, then when TikTok takes him off the platform, content that is anti Andrew Tate is now pushed to the front of the line. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden now someone like uh, Mac and Murphy will get more of a push on TikTok than he will on YouTube where 
I do take content is not nearly as as uh, hurt as much on TikTok on YouTube as it is on um on on TikTok. TikTok tends to have a little bit more of a progressive bent than YouTube does. YouTube has some, but not nearly to the same extent. And I think YouTube yeah. uh, does because of a response to what happened when Rumble and some of these other platforms came out where conservative content creators were allowed to to make money on there, YouTube yep. realized that they had to, like, I don't know if you saw, uh, people were saying anyone who made content about the, the election being stolen, their content was being demonetized. Well, YouTube yep. has, has walked that back because of so many oh, of really? those content creators moving over to Rumble. Yes, that's exactly right. And I'm not saying that the election was stolen. What I'm saying is yeah. what's happened is certain platforms are, like, I can't, some of my lifestyle content that I put on Instagram, no problem, whatever. Me with, I, I host bikini competitions here in Vegas. I host several beauty pageants. When I post that content on Instagram, never a problem, goes viral, never an issue. Twitter, no issue. Facebook, no issue. If I post anything that shows a woman's behind on TikTok, it is immediately <clears throat> taken, it's taken down and I lose my channel. So yeah. there's different type of content is, 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 uh, is you, like you said before, is, is platformed on different places. And I think the Andrew, if anti-Andrew Tate content sort of gets a push on TikTok specifically. Yeah, it's it's almost like there's like a, a boy and a girl version of social media. Yes. It's like it, when I post things on YouTube, they they effortlessly sail, and I have to really kind of push on TikTok to get it going. Like sometimes I'll have good money weeks on TikTok because I'll post a certain thing that'll go viral, but then sometimes it tanks, and YouTube is still doing fine. It's just um, yeah. I mean, I suppose that the, the d different places do have different kind of um angles or bents to them yeah. depending on the way that they're run or their policies or whatever or who who it's really who their audience is yeah right but even on youtube where the audience is overwhelmingly male they still are or did or will or whatever you know prevent a lot of things from being said For and sure. i think that that's i think that there's there's I don't know if there's a way to quantify it, but it feels to me to be very much going in one direction in government and academia and, uh, and media and social media and so on and so forth. What, what were the specific things you said that you had demonetized? You had mentioned that before. You had a few things demonetized. Um, there was there was a video that I made about um, – there was this statistic going around that I, some people said that I misquoted it, which might be true, but it doesn't I, – I still didn't get the principle wrong. It was about lesbian marriage having a higher divorce rate, and I used that to kind of demonstrate how – maybe, you know, possibly what's going on is that women are more sensitive to negative emotion. And yes. so they're having feelings about their partners and uh, then just saying, well, if I have the feeling you might, there it is. If I have the feeling, then you must have done something like this is an illustrated psychological yes. projection. If I'm feeling something, it must be because you did it. So when you get two girls together, it's just like a lot of, I have a bad feeling. So you must've done it. Well, you must've done it. Well, you must've done it. And I've had friends who were lesbian couples and that's how they fought. And they were, I, I, I got to see them say like, it was like, you, you never buy me flowers. Will you never buy me flowers? Will you never initiate? Will you never initiate? And it was like a lot of negative energy. Not that negative is bad. It's just that, you know, existence, masculine and feminine have to come together to create things. So, um, this video was doing really, really well. And I was going to make a ton of money on it. And they demonetized after like 90 minutes. Do they say exactly I, why? Do they, yeah, do they, 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 it's, it said hate speech. That's incredible. Let me, yep. I'm just curious. So the, was the 72% number the one that was incorrect? So I guess that it's the, the way the way that people said it to me is that it's not that 72% of them end in divorce compared to a straight marriage. It's that there was maybe 72% of gay marriages that ended in divorce were lesbians and the, all the others were gay men. Yeah. So no, the, I'm, yeah, the answer. So, yeah, I'm not, yeah. So, so here, here's what the, the, this is why I was a little confused. So the way it works is about 56% of heterosexual divorce or divorces overall, actually believe 56% end in divorce, 56% 50, of marriages. It is 52% mm -hmm. for the first marriage, a uh, 63% for the second marriage and like 73% for the third marriage. I may be wrong. Mm -hmm. I think it may be 68% for the second marriage. I can't remember, but James yeah. Sexton's yeah. going to come on and clear me up on that. When, when, when it came to, they were like, what were the reasons for divorce? When 80% of divorces, 70 to 80% of divorces are initiated by women. The question is, why are these women initiating these divorces? I've had uh, yeah. a marriage therapist on here uh, in a previous episode. And she was saying, well, it's because men are not doing their part. So even though 80% of the divorces are initiated by women, it's men's fault that that was going on. I was like, okay, that's an interesting hypothesis. Why yeah. don't we control for that? Why don't we look at marriages where women are married to women and married women, men are married to men? And the reality is women, women divorce women, lesbian couples initiate divorce. 
at 200% the rate that m gay couples initiate divorce. So that when women don't even have men to blame, they're still leaving marriages more than men are. Now, the numbers are much lower than 56%. So the reality of the situation is same-sex couples, for whatever reason, they get divorced at a lower rate. But the point is the women were, at, were complaining about the same things, but there were no men involved, especially the domestic abuse one. That is a big yeah. one. Domestic abuse reported amongst lesbian couples is outrageously high. The other thing that yeah. precipitated divorce, I think you'll find this interesting, between lesbian couples, was when one of the two uh, members of the relationship, one of the two members of the marriage, had a baby, a biological baby that was theirs. When that happened, that triggered divorce. And I think because mm -hmm. this is just my opinion, uh, well, I, there's some data behind this. Uh, there's a book called Dataclysm. Uh, it's the CTO from uh, Q OK Cupid. I think he wrote this book. Yeah. And he was looking yeah. at data between bisexual men and bisexual women. And what he found is that bisexual men, in large part on the platform, only messaged men. Bisexual women, yeah. on the other hand, message men and women, showing that actual true bisexual men, like actual real fucking destinies, are very mm. rare. That's like less than one and a half percent of the population. Bisexual yeah. women, however, will go through phases, and bisexuality or sexuality for them is more of a is more of a spectrum. And so the idea yeah. was we have a lesbian woman who still has genetics of a female, and she's sitting there looking at her child and then says, This isn't what I want, this lesbian relationship. I probably need a man here. And then that's essentially what happens. That's yeah. that's one of the theories. I'm not saying that's absolutely a fact, but having a child with a lesbian couple precipitating divorce could be a theory why that is happening. But going back to what yeah. you're saying before. Get, if, if the problem were that men are creating the issue, then what you would see is that lesbian couples would get divorced at a lower rate than homosexual couples because men are the problem. You see what I'm saying? Right. But what happens right. instead is that lesbian couples are getting divorced at 200% the rate that male yeah. couples are because in cases, what your theory was is that a lot of times women make up the problem and then yeah. that, that causes the 70 to 80% divorce rate. Yes, that's. I think that I think that what they refer to as women having a higher sensitivity to negative emotion yes. uh, is just sort of you know what men refer to as co women causing unnecessary problems. And yes. this is my recommendation for how to deal with it. Just don't go down to that level. Um, this is just something that you know people. Someone yesterday asked me if I hate women because I depict them this way, and that's this. It's one of those questions I'm going to be getting because I talk about what actually happens in relationships. But this is an experience every man has who's dated a woman for more than a couple of weeks, that she will find a reason to start a problem based on something that we didn't know or weren't aware of and don't really understand why it's an issue. And it's because she's just has this sort of instinct, I believe, to feel something negative, blame you for it, and then see if she can tear you down with it it's kind of a it's a, that's what they call a shit test i think right yes, a shit test absolutely yeah. and this is that's my depiction of that well so. go ahead oh yeah no that's just my that's my de depiction of how that works is that that women will spontaneously do this to see what you do and it's yeah. a way of testing your emotional strength and when women are shit testing women in lesbian relationships they probably don't have the hardware for it yeah, so they they failed the shit test. Exactly, I, I see what you're saying. Definitely. Oh, yeah. well, the thing is, as a guy, you you made that one video where the girl was complaining on the phone, and the guy was celebrating. He was happy because then he yeah. understood she was invested in the relationship. And you have to understand, yeah. a woman from an ancestral period, it she has a lot of more invested in a relationship than than women do today. If a woman today um, does something where she has been promiscuous, she ends up like, um, you know, what's her name, Nina Agdal, where she's embarrassed mm -hmm. on 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 Twitter. But a yeah. woman in an ancestral period who had sex with the wrong man or had a baby with the wrong man, her and her child are ostracized from the tribe and they die. They literally starve to death. The, yeah. ostrac the ostracization of them, of her for having sex with the wrong man or being perceived as a slut or whatever was so incredibly damaging. It was so dangerous. It was such a life and death situation. That's why it was, it was more important. So it was more important for her to make sure that she kept the man she was with. So what does she do? She's constantly checking. Are you looking at that other girl? And that's where these shit tests come from. Why yeah. did you do this? Why did you do this? One of the things um, I really loved was, and you made a video about her, was uh, Sadia Khan. You know, you remember mm -hmm. what I'm talking about? She makes some, some really great content. She w said something like, the one thing that every woman actually wants is a man she cannot manipulate. And I think about yes. that, that blowtorch okay. thing. She, every, one thing that every man wants is a man she cannot manipulate. And, yeah. and it was one of these situations where 
Like we both know you're making this up, but my reaction yeah. to it means that you're able to manipulate me. And then that yeah. therefore, even though you're in the short term getting the reaction you're looking for, oh yes, he cares about me. In the long run, you're saying this is a reactionary man who is not yeah. going to be able to provision, provide and protect because he's reacting to my outburst. Yeah. And it's, it's this horrible, um, uh, a split of needs that women have where it's on the one hand, I want to prove that you care about me. So you have to get emotional. But on the other hand, if you do get emotional, then you're too weak to care about me. So it's like, there's a constant, uh, line that you have to ride between, you know, good guy, good guy and bad guy stuff. Like, one of the things that I say all the time is that in order to keep a woman happy for a long period of time, you have to be able to get women, but then not actually do it so that she's, you have to kind of keep her anxious because I could lose you, which is attractive because of the mate choice copying hardware. Yeah. And when, when she knows that other women want you, then she'll get upset and make a problem. And then you have to not be bothered by the problem. And she'll say, you well, that you don't feel this way about me. And then you have to demonstrate, yes, yes, I care about you. But if you do that, then you're not as attractive. This is, this is something that I, I argued with uh, Mackin as well. I, I argued that I think excessive investment and, you know, kindness makes you unsexy because it's like too easy to get you. Yeah. You, you you have to be always riding the line of escaping and getting other women splitting your investment with other women but then not actually doing it. Is it always almost lost almost lost them almost lost them almost lost them. That's yeah. how you keep women excited for long periods of time. Otherwise it gets boring and you get into these boring areas and then she's more likely to cheat and then blame it on you as well the, in some cases the parlance is called dread the concept of you being able to cheat but not necessarily cheating on her is dread you create dread okay that's, that's like okay the, like, like the colloquialism it's not a scientific term but like do you create dread so the dread the, the situation is uh, like because this is probably the thing that my clients would be most interested in is the good guy bad guy traits what i yes. what i refer to is things that create attraction versus things that create comfort and you say mm -hmm. good guy traits and bad guy traits Whenever I have a client who very clearly uh, does not give himself permission, it generally comes from a very structured uh, household where they were told to be quiet, um, yeah. told to not be expressive. Um, but, you know, very much uh, family tried to arrange a marriage, wanted them to marry someone in their same demographic, socioeconomic demographic. This is someone who's an immigrant from, say, India or South Korea or someplace like that, wanting their children to date like date like. Uh, and in those situations, when I meet men that come out of those situations, they're very afraid to express themselves. They're afraid to give themselves permission in certain incidents. And so I show them videos of like Wes Watson, like a dude who's, you know, he went to jail 10 years for attempted murder. And just the dude just screams and he gives himself total permission. And then I'm like, I don't want you to become Wes Watson, but I do want you to understand that like, this is what total permission looks like. And you can't do this. And then I ask them, slap the table and say, let's fucking go. And it's like, let's fucking go. And they think yeah. in their mind they're being expressive, but they don't understand how the world has sort of like, or their upbringing has, has clamped them down and I need yeah. to get them to grasp some of these more bad boy characteristics or what I yeah. call attraction triggers. And I was wondering if you could go over those down at the bottom of your chart there. Yeah, sure. So I just split it up into two basic categories. I split it up into looks, which is just your body. Some things you can control and some things you cannot, you cannot work out until you're taller. But um, as long as you're in the best shape you possibly can be and you have a haircut and a facial hair that fits you and women like it and your hygiene is good and blah, 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 blah. As long as you have your body in maximum shape, you know, you've maxed out how physically attractive you are. And then masculinity, which I split up into, uh, there's a bunch of different things under here. I kind of rushed to get zones out, so I don't have, this is not exact, but I believe that you can split masculinity up into power and confidence. So that's your ability to do things, and then also your certainty about your ability to do things. I think women find those sexy independently of looks. Like, even if you're not a very attractive guy, if you are super powerful and you're really cocky about it, and you're never wrong, too, like, you can't be confident and wrong because then women will say, well, you're just full of, full of it. Mm. Um, if you are really confident, you go, don't worry about it. I got this. Like that's why dark triad traits are under here because that's kind of narcissistic, uh, uh, self assurance, that cockiness and, um, dark triad being narcissism, psychopathy and, uh, Machiavellian. Machiavellianism. Yeah. So those three traits are signifiers that you have 
abilities. You know how to use them. You know when they work, and you're not afraid to use them when it's time. So being like being able to to go into psycho mode has been it's worked really well for me with women. There have been times where I have almost lost my cool a little, and and women go, "Wow, oh, wow, I've never like I never see guys actually threaten to use force." I've never seen that. They're always so nice. And they go, oh, let's come to an understanding. And they say that's unattractive. And when I demonstrate to them that I'm willing to suspend empathy from someone who's threatening me, they say they like that. So power and the confidence that you're correct in the use of your power is is what I would separate masculinity into. Yeah. And if you want to separate that even further, it would be social status and certain kinds of social status because up here in presentability you would have this would be mr rogers and this would be um tony montana scarface so there's different kinds of social uh you know climbing that you can do you can have nice guy social climbing and bad boy social climbing and so in order to be attractive to women you have to be able to make people do what you want you have to be able to get money you have to be able to do physical things with your muscles if you can um if you go axe throwing mm. and and she beats you axe throwing, she's gonna go ick. ick you need yeah. to beat her. You need to beat her. So, Win these are basically yeah, 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 yeah. You need to be able to beat her. You need to be able to beat other men. Uh, there's this there's this famous clip of some woman talking to Joe Rogan about uh, her boyfriend who was a fighter and he got punched in the face and he did the fencing response, which is when your arms go out like that because you know he got his brain rocked and his arms automatically got stiff like that and she mistook it for him protecting his face like a wimp and she just said that was a big turnoff and i didn't wasn't attracted to him anymore because he wasn't expressing dominance she said you should go down swinging and even if you're losing you know give him the middle finger while you're losing yeah so even even getting hit in the brain and your body involuntarily moving can give women the ick the ick because it's not masculine so, enough yeah. yeah because it's didn't didn't appear masculine enough yeah. yeah it's getting affected by the environment getting beat up so yeah. like y- you got to you got to learn how to win somewhere and then go out and win where she can see you and that's how you transcend your looks the guys there's too many guys who they think that they're dead in the water because they're short and it's like you're a good-looking, intelligent guy, and you're five foot six. Go play guitar. Go go do something impressive yeah. in front of women. And the ones who don't care that you're short will show right up. That's one of the things that I want men to learn because there's sort of there's there's a huge number, there's a huge percentage of men in the Western world who are all focusing on this stuff. Let me be nice and buy you flowers and be good to you, and then you'll be sexually attracted to me. And it's no, that's not what ha- makes that happen. Yeah. So that's it's all being dominant. Yeah. yeah. So the, the, the concept of, on the, the stuff on the bottom part of the scale, those are the things that are, are the bad boy things, the things on the right yep. side of the scale. Those are the things that are the good guy things. And you mentioned before yep. and, I, and I love this concept. Sadia Khan, she made a, a video similar to this where she said, uh, women do not hate nice guys or good guys. What they do is they right. hate nice guys that don't have boundaries. So the concept of yep. I am nice to you because your boobies are big. I'm being nice to you. I'm doing these things. And she can clearly tell this man is overly nice to me, but he's being, he's investing in me, but he's doing so just because I'm physically attractive. And because of that, his, his intent and attractiveness or attractedness is cheap. Mm -hmm. It doesn't cost anything. It it, did. I didn't have to work for it. The guy at the bottom cares less and the woman has to do more to get attention from him. Therefore his intent is, is worth more. It is of a higher value. And what he, she yeah. said is what women really want is a guy who does both. He can be nice, but he still maintains those boundaries. And then that's when yeah. you called it Prince Charming. Yes. Yeah. That's the ideal thing that I think men should be. I don't know whether or not Prince Charming or Bad Boy is the best strategy for propagating your genes. But I do know that for the long-term survival of humanity, Every man trying to get here for the woman of his choice is the ideal. Yeah. Like this is this is how life gets better for everyone. When every man has a woman here and every woman has a man here and he knows how to do that. Yeah. It's of course much easier for women to get here. Just be, you know, good looking enough for him and treat him well and he'll 
love you most of the time. There's some guys who obviously have, you know, high standards and cheat all the time. But for women, it's just, you know, like we went over before, you're constantly riding this line of like, you're being too nice to me, so I'm bored. And now you're not being nice enough to me, so you must be cheating. And and it, you have to, it's been very difficult to walk this line. It is. Um, yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's not for the faint of heart. And I think most men are just fundamentally not capable of it, which is why we used to have social, uh, 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 you know, trends or whatever you call them, social, uh, policies of, of making people get together. We, we had, we had really strictly, monogamy. Yeah. Yes. We had strictly enforced marriage and we would, we would say our, our families are going to get together and go, Hey, your daughter looks like she's about right for my son. Let's see if they like each other. And then you introduce them and they become familiar and she goes, yeah, he's not so bad. Which yeah. is something I've heard women report quite a bit, that they'll go out with a guy who is nice and she doesn't like him, but she kind of forces herself to go on three or four dates and goes like, you know what? Not that bad. Yes. So this is the difference between familiar and unfamiliar environments. And in a familiar yes. environment, you can use other attraction triggers like uh, your ability to speak, your alignment with other men, your sense of humor. There's things that are, are different than whereas on Instagram, it's just literally height you know, shoulder to waist ratio and eye color and facial structure, like those things that, that what women are judging on, on dating apps and on yeah. specifically on social media, those things are in an unfamiliar environment where 80% of men are deemed to be below average attractiveness. And then in a yeah. familiar environment, like what, what Mackett says, the good news is that you yeah. can then, then things sort of even out a little bit more uh, because you can put yourself in an environment. So I actually want to ask you something. This is just for my own personal experience. Uh, um, uh, you know, curiosity. So I had first heard of these concepts of good guy traits, bad guy traits, or attraction and comfort from ironically a guy named Mystery, uh, Eric von Markovitz. It's like 15 uh -huh. years ago. I met Mystery. Mm -hmm. We had a conversation about it. It was really interesting stuff. You know, he was obviously famous pickup artist, whatever. And he and I are yeah. still friends. And in, in, in doing that, I moved to Las Vegas. And one of the things that I saw was women, they would go to these different events and these modeling agencies would bring atmosphere models. And the women were treated like cattle. The dudes were excessively rude to them. Mm -hmm. I watched this happen over and over again. And I got this concept. I was like, what if we didn't treat them like cattle, but I could still maintain boundaries. And then I learned about pre-selection or what you yep. talk about mate choice copying. And I was like, what yep. if I just use pre-selection as an attraction trigger? I maintain my boundaries, but I'm still really fucking nice to them. Nice to them like yeah. a friend. I don't give, I don't stare at their boobs. I don't give them special treatment because they're hot. What if that <laughs> happened? And I will tell you how math, it has been outrageously effective, outrageous, yeah. outrageously effective in the number mm -hmm. of women that come into my life that had wanted to date me or wanted to come to my events or introduce me to other women. That was probably the most successful strategy. And I didn't know. It was a ex total experiment while I was doing. But when I listen to you and Sadia Khan, it makes m way more sense to me. I'm able yeah. to, I'm secure enough to where I can still do the good guy things and maintain mm -hmm. a boundary. If I was yep. just doing the good guy things because she was attractive and I was willing to yep. go outside of myself, I'm paying for flights for women who don't give me barely any, any attention. I'm like, I'll fly yeah. you out. That is a, a high level of investment, but it also yeah. shows that my level of investment is cheap. It's easy yeah. to get my intent. And instead yeah. what I do, like I have very strict rules, like I'm not gonna fly a girl out, I'm not dating. I don't know, uh, and this is just a personal rule for me. I would, I would not be in a relationship with a woman I haven't already slept with. That's just a rule that yeah. I have. And those type of things, these are boundaries that I have. Also, the other thing is when men get around women, their vocal in intonation changes. So their pitch goes higher and they become yeah. more expressive and their eyes get big and you start yes. seeing autonomic responses. When you're around a lot of women, one of the things I do is I, because I'm around women, I don't get woman-like. Maintain masculine presence, even though I'm still like opening the door for them, even though I'm yeah. still being a gentleman. Um, J Justin Waller is a friend of mine. He's really good at this concept of being a good guy who still maintains frame and has boundaries and, and also the pre-selection and the mate choice copying other women find him attractive because of that, you're able to generate those bad boy attraction cues while at the same time still being good. So you get attraction and comfort. And I will tell you, it just is just in, for me in my own personal comparison between 25, I'm 46 now in between in that 20 year period, the outrageous the outrageously high level of attraction I get from women in comparison to when I was 25. This is what I noticed from, from these, uh, these attributes. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that, um, th th that this idea of th what you're talking about is riding the line between the two of these things, which mm. is a really excessively difficult skill. And one of the reasons that I, like, I, I, I don't, I should print it out. I have it on my phone. Um, 
I have this Aquil integral map that I use. That is, I'm not sure if it's even going to show up. There it is. Uh, these are levels of psychological development. Uh, I guess my camera's not oh, quite good enough to see it. But yeah, these are levels of psychological development that I studied uh, academically. And part of what I do focuses on showing people where they are and how to move up. And I believe that moving people up in psychological development gives you more ability to understand what's going on in the mind of your Ooh, partner yeah. and in the mind of yourself. So you know when they're, when she's asking for this and this, and when you are feeling this and this, and it gives you more of an ability to, you know, in this environment where, where we, where we, this is what we're dealing with. And it's just this overwhelming, like society is changing in not good ways. Maybe, just moving up in on this scale is the only tool that we really have left to learn how to provide these when they're needed. And this is something that I've noticed that I've gotten really good at too. Like I started early in life being all this because I, I fell for it. They yes. said, be nice and women will like you. And I fell for it and they didn't like me. And so I said, well, so wait a minute, what do women like? Who are they spending time with? How do I become more like that? And then I went, whoa, and I just shifted over here. And I had, you know, no money and I was on unemployment. And I was just going through dozens of women and they were crying over me. And I was like, I told you, I didn't want to, you know, didn't know where I was going in three weeks. And now I'm at a point in my life where I know how to provide, you know, except for money, which I haven't gotten yet. I know how to provide what women need when they need it. And the relationships that I have been having have been really powerfully more positive than any that I've had in the past. And I'm hoping to be able to transfer that skill to other people through my videos and my personal coaching. I think it may, might be our only shot to just make that kind of go viral, the idea that you need to grow up and learn how to do that. Can we, can we talk about the specific thing, shadow work? So it's yes. the, the idea of thinking about thinking. This was just because it's one of these situations where um, sometimes people will make mean videos about my friends or about me. And my mm -hmm. initial reaction is to react to them and to say horrible things about their family and their mother and et cetera, et cetera. Oh, yeah. And what yeah. I, what I did instead was what I, when I remember I was seeing that video, just thinking like, what was the trauma they went through? What are the biases that they're, you know, that they have in their mind? What are the, it's like, oh, like I said before, academia may be having an effect on the way date psych and, and the way, um, Mac and Murphy view the world. I understand that me as a Protestant cisgendered Christian from Texas caused yeah. me to probably more likely join the military. I'm more likely I joined the military because I'm from Texas that I understand. I'm aware of that bias. I'm a fan yeah. of the university of Texas and not the university of Oklahoma. I'm a Cowboys fan mm -hmm. and I'm not a, and I'm not an Eagles fan. I grasp thinking about thinking, where do my biases come from? And I just wondering if you yeah. could go into this because I really do, even though I think it'd be a lot more boring on YouTube, I think it would be a lot better as far as communication. If more of us did this. Yeah, I mean, I did make a video uh, about this recently, and it really crushed. Like, it did over a million views, I think, in a week. Awesome. So, yeah, it's been going really well. Like, there are there's a lot of people interested in in self development, which is great because that's what I do. Um, the dating stuff is kind of like the way that I want to get into self development. I'm yeah. applying it to dating right now, which is awesome and very much fun. But this is just my diagram that, uh, you know, I, I printed out on a coffee cup. It's not within reach, but I, I bought it. I, you know, I'm buying my own merchandise. Um, this is just my depiction of it. It's like wherever you are and whatever you're doing, like right here now, I'm on a podcast and I'm explaining what I'm doing. And why am I doing that? Well, it's a really great opportunity. This guy knows what he's doing. He knows all the right people. I want the exposure. Well, what, why do I want the opportunity? Well, because it's going to be really great for my career and it's going to give me a lot of exposure. And why do I want this career and all the exposure? Well, because it's going to advance my goals of helping people to change themselves and of getting me money. And, you know, why do I want to change people and to get money? Well, to make their lives better and to make li my life better. And why do we need to do that? Well, it's because I've heard people having these bad experiences. It always comes down to you start in the present moment and then you end in a former present moment. Mm. It's always, it, it's always, I've been treated poorly by women. And then I learned how not to. And so that's like, that made me think and think and think and think and think until I got here. And it's like, that was the start of it. You have to be able to trace what your basic motivations are. It always comes mm. down to sensations and feelings and emotions. 
And I don't like it that people are going through this. Like there's these perfectly good guys who can't get girls to pay attention to them at all. Yeah. And so now I'm here trying to give them the skills to do that. And I have had a really hard time making money and this is working for me. And so now I'm here doing that. And sometimes it takes multiple steps of understanding yourself in order to get what you're doing. There are some diagrams that I have of people not thinking about thinking properly and then learning to. Uh, There was a girl in particular who was looking at her phone. There it is. And she saw some influencer saying, you know, man bad or whatever. And then she started looking at the man in her life and saying, well, if the man on the phone is bad and I believe the influencer about it, then maybe this man is bad. So then what do I do about the situation? These are the, the stages. And she was stopping right there. She felt something because she saw it, uh, it just a direct experience. And she was like, oh, that makes me feel an emotion. Is that emotion also going to come from my boyfriend? Maybe. What do I do to prevent it? And then she's causing trouble in the relationship. When she got to therapy, she, she was instructed to, hey, take a step back. Ask yourself if this is the correct process. Like what I just did with the taking steps back until I figured out that I'm here for my money and to help people learn traits. I think both of those are good things. When she took a step back, it's like, is this a good process of decision-making. Well, no. Well, why not? How, how do I know it isn't? And what do I do about it? You, you need to take these subconscious processes that we all have and make them conscious. And that's what thinking about thinking is. It's going to the deep basic experience and making it something that you're consciously aware of and can operate on, which is, you know, basically what I'm drawing out in in these charts. Yeah, I mean, uh, from from a leadership's perspective, like me being in the military, that right there, thinking about thinking about the motivation of why people do things is such mm-hmm. an important leadership component. Great book about this, uh, The uh, Dichotomy of Leadership and um, uh, the, by Jocko Willick and uh, Leif Babin. It really, really goes over that stuff. It's really great. Go If you could go back to the, 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 the one with the brain, the first one you yeah. showed me. There's yeah. one, so I've tried doing this, but there's one level that I added and it's the level yeah. of the, you know, the book behind me. And that level is... I'll wait till you get there. Uh, yeah, that that, there that level is what did my ancestors need this motivation yeah. for in yeah. order for them to, to, to aid in their survival? And that's a good yeah. thing or a bad thing. Like, for instance, if it's outrageous levels of jealousy, mate, like mate guarding, which was a necessity for some men throughout our evolutionary history, I can say to myself, this is a neurochemical re- reaction that is happening because my ancestors had something that happened similar. And when they were not uh, studious, when they were not fastidious over their, their mates, some other man, they were having some other man's kid. So I yes. understand where that comes from. But the other part is like, why? So this is just my personal belief. And I've heard Dr. Buss briefly mention this. I believe the highest level for men is for men to com- is for men to achieve goals with other people mm-hmm. for, for n- not specifically men men and women too but like men coming to there's a reason why the Super Bowl is the most watched single television show uh, in the world it's because watching groups of people accomplish things together to me the highest reward I've ever gotten is when I have a client who we work together to achieve a goal for him. And I think yeah. that may be from an evolutionary standpoint, again, you and me go out 50,000 years ago and we work together. I flush out the, the gazelle and then you stab him. You see what I'm saying? We yeah. work together and then we bring home the meat and the entire tribe is cheering us on because they've been starving. That type of evolutionary response of us working together in order to achieve a goal, I think is the highest form for men. That's just my opinion. Uh, that I think that's the, the highest part. That's the reason why when you people, human beings don't socialize, they go crazy. That's why you see people when they go into isolation, they go crazy because they need socialization from other, they need feedback from other human beings. So I love this right here. This is something very similar to what I use, but there's a, there's a final one where what did my ancestor need 50,000 years ago in order to get to where he's getting? Yeah. So that would, the process that I described, you Mm -hmm. would just add education about the way that our brain is constructed. Sure. So I, I have it started from the front of the brain going towards the back because that's where that's, those processes are located. The amygdala, so, yeah. yeah, even if you don't understand evolutionary psychology, it still helps to figure out what your motivations are. But if you, if, uh, yeah, if you can understand them in the context of why do I have this urge from an evolutionary perspective and why is it useful? Like um, women need to understand that when men are drawn to you know, look at other women, something that women have been telling me a lot 
is that men will cheat with someone who's kind of like not very high quality. Mm -hmm. He will marry a woman who's really high quality and then cheat with someone who's not high quality. And the the women will feel like, you want to trade me for that? But no, he doesn't want to trade. He just wants to mate short term on the side with someone who's very easy to mate with. So he can have other children for cheap while still investing everything in you. So in the woman's brain, she, if she cheated, it would be to trade up. So that's the process going on for her and she's projecting that onto him. If if you're cheating it must be because you're trading up. But understanding the differences between our brains and how they're constructed can help us process those things a lot better so we don't have to misunderstand each other and fight with each other about things like that. Like when a guy gets caught looking, it's really it doesn't mean I don't like you and I like her. It just means I was not paying attention for a moment and I looked at something nice Yeah, and I can't. Yeah. So, Oops, so sorry. It's yeah. funny because caveat back to something we were talking about before. This might be the reason why the lesbian divorce rate is so much higher than the, the homosexual male divorce yeah. rate is because what you said before the men understood like a man cheats, but the other man is aware. It's like, Oh, but I am aware that I can have yeah. sex and separate that from feelings. Whereas women can't do that. They don't do it as easily. And so I think yep. the understanding that these two men, because they're still men, even if they're gay, they're still men, they're still yeah. going to have this issue. One of the coolest st- studies I heard Dr. Buss talk about, he goes, when men cheat, women tend to ask, do you love her more than yeah. did you fuck him? Or did, did you fuck her? When mm-hmm. women cheat, men ask, did you yeah. fuck him? Yeah. And, and he used those exact words on my show. When homosexual men cheat, homosexual men ask, did you fuck him? And when Mm -hmm. lesbian women cheat, lesbian women ask, do you love her? Meaning that those proclivities exist in your gender and not in your sexual orientation. And so I think that's really interesting. And that goes back to evolution. So I think, I think it's just a really interesting point there where you, you and I understand it's still, it's still made. This is a, this is the part where I think some of these more progressive evolutionary psychology guys may have an issue with it. We still understand this may degrade society. Having men yep. be able to have sex with 17 women on a trip to Panama or Brazil or whatever, oh, yeah. and then come back to their wives and it not affect them psychology, it's, it's psychologically, it's still not good for society. But we no. also, if I were to tell you that there was a guy who once a quarter, he, you know, he ran a multi-billion dollar business and once a quarter went to some place and banged a bunch of prostitutes and he still loved his wife, you could still believe he loved his wife and had no intention sure. of divorcing her. But if I told you that a woman was doing that, the study specifically from the evolution of, or no, I'm sorry, from uh, when men behave badly by Dr. David Buss is the concept yeah. of when men cheat in a relationship, they res- report the same level of satisfaction in the relationship, in the marriage as men who didn't cheat. Men who did cheat, men who didn't cheat, same level of satisfaction. When women yeah. cheated, 83% of the time they reported less satisfaction, meaning women when they cheat is far more deleterious to a relationship, meaning it means mm-hmm. the end of the relationship. Whereas when men cheat, it is literally a hard on, just like a hard on they get when they wake up. It's morning wood. Yeah. It's like that is the level to yeah. it. And even with my girlfriend, her and I are polygians. We sleep with women together. Even in mm-hmm. that situation, she still can't quite grasp it. It still yeah. doesn't quite make sense to her because her biology still kicks in because I'm, I'm, you know, she's my primary. I'm her primary. So that's yeah. that's essentially what goes on there. Yeah, it's it's there's a, a tendency that the brain has. I mean, I don't know if it's a tendency or if it's just something you can't get over. It's something. I think I've gotten over to an to an extent. I've yeah. made several videos that women have remarked upon about like men never understand this. How do you understand this? And I think it's because I've done the work of figuring out how mind brain brain works mm, and how women's yeah. brains work. And it's like what's going on in your mind. Sometimes people cannot conceive of how someone else's mind could possibly be different. So if I'm experiencing uh, extra marital attraction, then it means that I'm don't, don't like my husband anymore. Right. If I'm a woman, then that must mean everyone, if they're experiencing extramarital attraction, doesn't like their partner anymore. If that's the process for me, it must be the process for everyone. It's like a kind of projection and learning that that's not true can, I believe, help relationships function a lot better. Uh, Yeah. Absolutely, man. I love this. Uh, yeah, this is really great. Actually, and the, the other thing is also understanding that some of the impulses that you have are just neurochemical. They're not, yes. they don't, they don't necessarily like for me, uh, you know, one of my favorite books was the power of now by Eckhart Tolle, uh, because you know, my father was killed by a drunk driver and these mm-hmm. emotions that I had in me, the, the concept of these are things happening in me, but they're not me. Meaning when I can be aware of the fact that there's norepinephrine, dopamine, serotonin, um, running through my brain and that I am feeling these feelings because of these neuroreceptors, 
when I when these neurochemicals, because I when I know that, it makes it just one step easier for me to be able to get past it and then change my behavior. I'm still going to yeah. feel sad. Well, my dad, there was nothing you could tell me from a psychological standpoint. My dad died for me to not feel sad. The feelings are okay. My behavior and my interpretation of those feelings were my choice. Another book that I thought was great was The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck by Mark Manson when going mm -hmm. to this concept of like you get to choose what you think about. And that's what I think about when I see this, this thing here where we think about thinking. Where do these impulses come from? And I get yeah. to choose how I feel. And I also find that like when you talk to grandma, when you talk to women like, you know, that are older, or grandma and grandpa, they've gotten to this point. They're like, they're mm -hmm. far more understanding. Mom and dad are yelling at the kids, but grandma and grandpa are kind of like way more understanding because I feel yeah. like their life experience got them to this point. And then when I deal with people who are younger, then I, I see that they haven't got to this point. They believe that they're right because they feel they're right. This, I, I end yeah. up having debates with astrologers and flat earthers on here sometimes. Mm -hmm. They're right because they feel they're right. And so they're, they're not thinking about thinking or they're not thinking about having a, a empathy for other people's situation. Yes, this is a, this is something that I've I've noticed a lot. I've got some uh, friends and family members who they see something on the internet and they go, well, "That makes sense to me, so it must be true." Yes. They don't they don't yeah they don't take the time to to make the proper steps. Yeah. and that's a that's a vertical levels of development issue. Being yeah. able to have the transparency to understand how your own mind is misleading you is a fairly high level process. Incredible. I think that yeah. I, I don't I don't know what level to put it at exactly, but it's. More than average by a lot. Most people will never learn to do that. It makes and you not want to vote. It really, that's what, that's it really me. makes me just want to take a nap. <laughs> just yeah. like if if all these people are just seeing something on their phone and going, it must be true because it made me have a feeling. Why, why throw my energy into the system that they're controlling yeah. by, by by voting? It really, it really does. It really always does come down to that. It's like society cannot operate according to the lower brain impulses of a vast majority of the population. It's it's our, our system was explicitly designed for educated people. They they prevented everyone else from voting for a reason because yeah. they the, didn't know the, what they were voting yes, for. The original you needed to be a landowner. There was a meritocracy when it came to voting, but now it's not like that anymore. No. Now, so you have a pulse, you get a vote. Yeah. And everyone who's looking at their phone and they go, someone draws a politician with devil horns and they go, oh, okay, well, then he's bad. I'll vote against him. And, yeah. and they don't know it's happening. They think they're having a rational thought. It yeah. doesn't, and, and, doesn't and, work that way. And when you were talking about those different levels of thinking, social mm -hmm. media deliberately initially, because it's a short-term dopamine hit, yes. drags you to the lower levels of thinking. So you're constantly yes. being drugged down here. And this is yeah. the reason why, like I said before, I love this concept of thinking about thinking, but you know what also yeah. does well? People arguing on yep. social media, people calling each other out, people making reaction. I've seen some of the reaction videos to you. They're so mm -hmm. funny how they call you an incel and these guys yeah. are the weirdest looking backwoods, creepy dudes I've ever seen. And they're yeah. just like, they're just cuck enablers and they're just sitting there saying this yeah. stuff. And I'm like, bro, you are not the one who needs to be saying this. Like, I understand what yeah. you're trying to say. You didn't even watch yeah. the whole video. And it's just, yeah, yeah that, that's, a, that's another thing. I actually want to uh, uh, go over this and, and that is, this concept of like any time there is a discussion of intersexual dynamics, and when you when you look at evolutionary psychology, one of the things you're going to find is that it makes both genders look bad. It makes us look like hairless murder apes. It calls oh, yeah. into it calls into question the idea of free will. There's a lot of bad results that happen from like really not bad, but like society would look at some of these results and be like, that's ugly. So for instance, if I show that women who cheat in a relationship have 230% the sexual partners of women who don't, that's not mm -hmm. a result that a lot of feminists want to hear. Meaning like oh, yeah. you being a bad bitch actually has a discernible statistical disadvantage in marriage. That's not what mm -hmm. women want to hear. And no. so when you do those things, people get very upset and they don't want, uh, they don't want to you know, be a part of this discussion or they want to cancel this discussion. And yeah, so they just call you names. Exactly. They call you names and they, and so the word that I'm seeing that's happened before, like for instance, people who don't agree with Democrats on racist, on racial theory are immediately called racists and mm -hmm. men who do not comply to new dot, do not, um, what's the word I'm looking for? They don't conform to what women think is, um, uh, normal on social media or at least called icky or creepy. Right. What yeah. I found is mm -hmm. that when men talk about these concepts, when they, when they, when I criticize men, no one has anything to say about it. No one, yeah. when I criticize men, no one Naturally. has a problem with it. No, men don't have a problem with it. Women, men are used to being criticized. We don't, no one has a problem with it. 
When I use the exact same level to criticize women, then the word incel comes up, just like creepy or ick or racist or whatever. Mm -hmm. This incel work uh, comes up. And the reason why is because of the negative connotations and sort of the attachment to people who shoot up buildings and what, yeah. yada, 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 yada. Because of that, and the thing is like involuntarily celibate, like no offense, I've probably had sex with you and more than you and all your friends combined. Like, why are yeah. you saying you're calling me an involuntarily celibate person when I'm yeah. asking men to improve themselves? Like, literally, yeah. what you're saying isn't true. So you're painting. This is just one of the craziest things when I'm like, Andrew Tate promotes incel culture, and I'm like, Andrew Tate has been with like a thousand women. I don't yeah. grasp this concept, but it, what it is is it's this brush that you can just paint people with to yeah. negate their point of view. Exactly. So what they're doing in their minds is whether or not they consciously realize it, which I doubt, because I don't know how you could sleep at night if you were doing this consciously. But somewhere in their mind, they recognize that what we are saying is bad for their strategy. If if men are pushed to be a certain way and women are pushed to be a certain way, which would make everything better, then that's bad for like a lot of these guys, like you said, they kind of look like they're probably bottom feeders. They yeah. look like they're just kind of waiting in the shadows for a woman to make a mistake. And then it's like, that's the only way I can get attention. And they know what we're saying that we're really, we're encouraging people to be strong, to be better and make better choices. And then the world will be better. And they know somewhere that's bad for their strategy. And then what they consciously do, what comes out of their mouths is to say something just like this, the man bad on the phone, they, they know in this part of their brain that if they say this on the internet, then people will think this way about us and they'll never break out of this cycle. Of, yeah. Oh, that's bad. And so what do we do? Let's get him banned. And they'll never get to this point of like, well, what is that the right thing to do? And how do I know? Because social media keeps people in this, in these low, in this, this pit of unconsciousness all the time, which mm. is, I don't know what to do about it. It's like it's taken over everything in the in the last what fifteen years. Yeah, it's oh, like everything's I, changed I would, so much uh, in fifteen years. I would say from '05, so the beginning of like uh, MySpace, and then it mm -hmm. kicks off in '08 when the Facebook app is on uh, the iPhone, and then 2011 with Instagram. I think those are like kind of the three big points where you start seeing yeah. a lot of these changes happen. Uh, and, I, and by the way, I want to add some context. I know that after that, tw that scale that shows 2018, that the number did come down and then went up again, I believe in 2020, uh, because mm -hmm. of COVID. Uh, but the, the reality of the situation is when you compare men now to men previously, there is a greater cohort of men having no sexual options. That's a yep. real thing. Even if you want to say it's a short term issue that will be solved in the long term, that's a real thing that's happening. And oh, we've yeah. seen in previous societies that ends badly. So there is an issue. So to say that there is no crisis in dating, like I am being told I am irresponsible for calling women delusional. I think it, to say that there is no crisis in dating is actually what's irresponsible. Oh, think, yeah. That's a big thing for me. That that's that point that I was trying to. I. I don't know if you if you watched the whole thing with me and Mac and but every it was, bit of it, yeah. Yeah, he didn't really let me get to everything I wanted to say, but what I really wanted to ask him was, don't you think that there might be something wrong with telling people that there there isn't anything wrong with with this? The fact that the fact that we objectively are measurably moving more towards this and you're saying everything's fine all you have to do is go out and participate in this which is disappearing and then this is blossoming don't you think it's wrong to tell people that you're gonna be fine if you just participate in this because just by definition most men can't compete yes and i remember being one and then moving up into a place where i was you know a strong competitor and then just getting old and like women don't most of them don't think that way about me anymore. It's like, oh, yeah, that was like, there's a line right about here where you're either in or out. Yeah, and I call it status poverty. That's what we call it in MLM, yeah, status poverty. Yeah, exactly. And I got more status now, and that's it's great. It's a great look for me. I'm, so I'm excited to host a live stream. Do you want to date home math? I'm excited. I will be your MC for that. I will be the game show host, and we're going to have a, we're going to have a reality show for that. Oh, let's, let's figure out who wants it. <laughs> let's do it. Beautiful. Yeah, that'd um, be great. So, so go, keep going. Um, I mean, I, I don't know if I had any more left to that point. It was just kind of like, I, I really feel it. And I really agree that, that that's a whole, um, you know, do, don't you think it's irresponsible to, to 
convince people that there is no problem yes. when there clearly is a problem. Yes. Again, good looking men on the internet with high social media profiles telling us that there is no problem in short term dating. I just want people yeah. to grasp that. Just don't let, yeah. like, I love Chris Williamson. His content is great. But when Chris Williamson is telling, giving men advice about dating, when he takes his shirt off and take photos for yeah. money, yeah. just please conceptualize what's going on there before yeah. you take his advice. I'm not saying it's bad advice. I'm just saying conceptualize where his biases may be. I'm yeah. in good shape now. I'm 46 years old. I was not yeah. in good shape previously, and I was made fun of horrendously in junior high and high school. Oh, yeah. So I was on mm -hmm. both ends of this spectrum. That's why I feel like I can give some advice to people uh, in these situations. Let's talk about another person. Um, uh, I'm, you know, Rolo is one of my best friends. I'm acquaintances also with Destiny. Destiny and I have become buddies. We, we text every once in a while. It's a really strange uh, friendship that we have, but he and I oh, agree sure. actually on a lot of political policies. And so we've teamed up on debates before when it comes to things like Ukraine. Um, Destiny, uh, you you had a, um, by the way, if you want me to connect you with him, I think it would be a really great dis discussion between yeah, you and that would him. Be, that would be, yeah, I made fun of him a little bit, so it might be it might be like a tense hello. But. Oh, no, it won't be. De Destiny's so <laughs> used to being made. Look, what you did was nothing. Dude, when, okay. We'll have debates, and literally on uh, Fresh and Fit and the Super Chat, we'll call him every every horrible word and me and Myron <laughs> are having to stand up for destiny during the debate for sure. hundred percent. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. I wouldn't, he is a super thick dude. He lets his wife okay. fuck other men and uh, was yeah, very yeah. open about it. And he does, he, he's, he gets criticized all the time. He's the thickest skin of probably anybody really. Great. It's not terrific. Anything. So anyway, yeah, I want to meet everyone. Of course. So, so Steven, he, um, he had the discussion he, where he talked about, and by the way, I, I sent you the video. He and I had the exact same debate that you were having the contention that you were having with him. And his belief yeah. is that, that men will get laid more if they just try harder. And this is yeah. a concept from cold approach pickup. If you mm -hmm. just try harder then by law of large numbers, you're just going to get laid more. And to a certain yeah. extent that has to be true. It's the central yeah. limit theorem in statistics as n approaches infinity. You're going to start to get an, a normal distribution. And some of the girls yeah. out here on the fat tail are just ready to fuck all the time as soon as you meet them and if you bump yeah. into enough of these women you're going to have more sexual experience it's I true i believe yeah. yeah it's true i believe it's what's called the sociosexual group of women or whatever if you get into that group repeatedly you're going to have a lot of sex the part yeah. that i had an issue with and by the way he agreed with me this is when you're dealing with any level of attractiveness with women that doesn't work anymore what works yeah. then is that you have to, you remember we talked about unfamiliar versus familiar environment? Yeah. I have these mm -hmm. frequent debates between cold approach pickup and what's called social circle, okay? Mm -hmm. My program, mm -hmm. I, I teach a kind of a leadership course for men, but one of the things we do, do, we talk about is showing very little intent to women in the beginning and building a social circle. A social circle is the familiar environment that you refer to there on the left where things are a little bit more even and I'm able to show more of my characteristics. I'm a leader of men, a protector of loved ones. I have a willingness to a willingness to walk away, et cetera. I'm funny. People respect me and other women find me attractive. Those things come in a familiar environment that is created yep. through social circle. I believe that you need, so basically what Destiny is saying is the alpha traits don't matter and the alpha traits in some cases don't even exist which I don't agree with because of evolutionary psychology. And of because those things don't exist, the actual way you get laid is by going to what he called more warm, comfortable situations where people, uh, war yeah, he said warm, no, warm, fuzzy situations where more women are down to have sex with you. Yeah. And that, that it, it works. It's a very shallow interpretation, which is what I was, it's so hard to get at in a short, but it's a very shallow interpretation of what sexual success is. It's not just the number of times you have sex. It's also with whom. So if it's with a woman who's having sex with 20 other guys, you're having a very small amount of sexual success. And if it's with a woman who's not very physically attractive, it's a very small amount of success. So if you are a lower guy who is not very stimulating to women and you do try a million times and you get to sleep with a few, you know, less attractive women who are also sleeping with 20 other dudes, you're, you're earning the a tiniest little speck of sexual success. And that's what I was saying about how D Destiny's logic there kind of denied the fact that some people that were more sexually valuable than others. Yeah. And it was just like, well, if you keep trying, you'll eventually get laid. But it's not just the experience of getting laid once in a while that people want. It's with a quality woman who isn't touching other guys. It's like for men maximizing uh, your sexual situation is the most beautiful women possible, the largest number possible, and with the smallest amount of other men possible. So if you are one of these lower level guys and you try a lot, you're going to be getting women who are, it's going to be very infrequent. You're going to get a small number. They're going to have other partners and they're not going to be high quality. So it's a 
tiny amount of success that yeah. you're going to get by doing that. Yeah. So when you do stratify things with uh, which he really wasn't doing, and maybe he believes this, but he did not explain this at all. Uh, yeah. Was the concept of stratifying people based on like there are higher status men, and when I say, by the way, when I say high status men or high status women, I mean are you desired by the opposite sex? It's not one of these things yeah. where every woman calls themselves a a ten. What would the right. opposite sex rate you? So I know yeah. my bank account equals X because that is the dollar amount that's in there, and my bench press yes. max is X because that's how much I can bench press. These are objective yeah. numbers in comparison to my cohort of men. How attractive am I compared to them? And then I can come up with a real number and then not have an emotional response about it. Because like you said, mm -hmm. the shadow work, like it's not my, some women, I'm just not their type. But like you said before with women, they, because they can consistently call themselves a 10. And when they do so, like you said, your, your female friend thought that she was a nine, right? And you're mm -hmm. like, this is not even possibly true. You're not no. a nine. When no. that situation happens, the, the same thing happens here in Las Vegas. I know girls who are you know pretty mid and they're like getting paid $2,000 to go to dinner with men and not have sex with them. And it's like mm -hmm. in her mind, she can't have a normal relationship with someone because she's stuck at the highest setting. And exactly. So, and so that that definitely becomes an issue. But yeah, I, I this is one of the things where I, I just vehemently disagreed. I was like, as I showed more attraction triggers, it wasn't just that more women were attracted, more attractive women were attracted. Yeah. Which leads to my next thing, kind of the argument that I've heard from the more progressive evolutionary psychology types was in this hypergamy chart that you're showing up there, those men have more sexual options, but those yep. men are not going like what, what, what destiny say, uh, men are not going into poor neighborhoods to, to carry, to, to take out all the yeah. poor women or right. whatever. What I was saying, what, what, what their response is, there's a sociosexual group of men and a sociosexual group of women. And the yeah. reason why these men at the top have high body counts is because they're fucking all the sociosexual women. Oh, and yeah. that is a cope. That is not true. Yeah. Like the number of guys that I know that are really good with women that are constantly having sex with women that have low body mm -hmm. counts is outrageously high. Yeah. In fact, most yeah. uh, I know so many couples where the woman's been with three guys and the guy's been with 500. I have seen this yeah. numerous times. The going yeah. back to what I said before about Machine Gun Kelly. Machine Gun Kelly, thousands of women. Megan Fox still chooses him. And so the point I was trying to make uh, in this whole, this whole deal was, um, was that the sociosexual thing, I think for men, the sociosexual, meaning these are hyper- uh, promiscuous men. These yeah. hyper promiscuous men are hyper promiscuous because the world allows them to be. Yeah. There's a cohort of men below them that wishes they could be, but yeah. they're not. And then there's a cohort of men below them that has that that's basically for whatever reason, maybe low testosterone or religious conviction, they're not in, interested in being hypersexual. That's fine. For women, yeah. Any woman who wants to be hypersexual immediately can be. Yeah. Can be. When exactly. women want to cheat in a role, this is why cheating statistics for men and women should not be correlated to each other because men cheat when they can and women cheat. If women want sex, sex manifests. So yeah. the, the women, the sociosexual group of women are, are sociosexual because they have chosen to be. The group yeah. of women below them are sociosexual because they, there's no group of women that wishes they could be sociosexual unless they're un, like ridiculously ungood, like very much not good looking. Very unattractive. Yeah, they're not bad, gonna. Yeah. They're gonna all have an issue. This is why this this idea of number one, these two cohorts of highly slutty people are the ones that are all fucking each other and everything is distributing normally no. is not true. And I've heard both no. of them say this before, and I think it's damaging because what it's, you're doing it's is emotional. You're, yeah, yeah. because what you're doing is you're pretending like this. Because here's the thing: right. if all these slutty men were just having sex with these slutty women, you're right. There is no crisis. You see that? Mm -hmm. That's a that that's a that's a data point that fits into the there is no dating yeah. crisis because yeah, so you know, they're just be fucking all the sluts anyway, so it's not a big deal. But that's not the case. I will tell you right now. My girlfriend has been with very few people before we got together. She's she yeah. was twenty years old when we met, and mm -hmm. that this idea that because I've been with a lot of women that that I'm I'm only going to sleep with women with a lot of men is just not true. And here's the th part that I find so disingenuous. I'm, I refuse to believe that fucking Date Psych and Mac and Murphy, Mac and Murphy went to Oxford, was sitting there and w observed real life and saw that only the good looking guys who were sleeping with lots of women were only sleeping with slutty women. I know they know that isn't true. Do you understand what yeah. I'm saying? I know yes. deep down as good looking men, they that also know this it. isn't true. And, and yet it. they're still yeah. purporting this nonsense. Yeah. And that's, it's, it's crazy. Like, I don't know what to do about it. It's crazy that, that they just, they don't want to, I mean, I think I've got it bookmarked, uh, that they, they don't want to bring that, they don't want to bring that out into the observable territory because it's going to disrupt what's going on in the subconscious, which is what is supporting their careers or whatever. And I, I really don't know how to attack that. I just, I just am trying to focus on how to 
ask people questions and make statements and provide evidence to to break this this wall down and make people step out here. And I got Mackin to do it a little bit when yes. we were talking about, uh, yeah, you remember when we were talking about cheating versus uh, uh, mate stealing, mm. I said, well, isn't it possible? And he said, yeah, okay, it's possible, but he wasn't happy about it. So I got him to do it. I want to get better at that. I think that's maybe the best weapon we have. His, his in... response to a lot of these things when you caught him were, why are you concerned about this? Or women yeah, aren't yeah. delotional because that's their preference. Or in right. the case of like, I remember specifically in the case of the promiscuity one, he said, I grant you that. And then moved on. I, I did a, a flat earth debate with this guy named John Zerka. This guy's, yeah, I like it, but he's a nutbag. And every yeah. time I would win a point, he goes, I'll grant you that. And then he would, anytime he lost, he'd skip. It's like, he'd skip the round. Does that make sense? Yeah, I saw yes. Mac and do that frequently in his, in his discussion with you. Yeah. It, that's the, um, what do they call that? It's kind of like moving the goalpost. It's like, yes. well, you're right about that, but it doesn't matter. Yes. I saw yeah. it frequently. And by the way, I respect him a lot. And I and the fact that these guys have yeah, no, access no to way talking. more data yeah. than me, I think it's important for there to be a discussion. I had yeah. Dr. Richard Reeves of the Brookings Institute here, and we asked him a question. We were like, you're an academic who's actually discussing this disparity between men and women when it comes to jobs and family and dating and et cetera. And Scott Galloway is another person who does this as well. When you do, you, you were one of the few academics that are doing this. Why do you think Andrew Tate became so popular? And he, his expression was, Andrew Tate became popular because we in academia weren't willing to have this discussion. And because of that, there was a void. We pretended that these this cohort of men who were not involved in short-term dating, we pretended like either they didn't exist or because they're a privileged class, because they're a privileged class, their suffering didn't matter or didn't matter yeah. as much. And so the discussion about them, why are men suffering in this? The, pe the women in the, in the women's study group would come over and protest your, your college course if you had a, a college course where yeah. why are men suffering in dating? Imagine if there was yeah. a, a call, psychology 101, why are men suffering in dating? Imagine what would happen if you were to have yeah. a course like that. And so, yeah. and so because of that, because of that level of inequity, that's essentially you know, where we, how we ended up in the situation we're in now. Yeah, yeah, and that was what I referred to, uh, that attitude that they use. Um, to to you know prevent you from talking about why are men suffering? W what I refer to it as is uh, everything I don't like causes mass shootings. Yes, I, lo I love that yeah. one. Everything you do, yeah. everything I, I stole that one. I used that the other day. Anything you don't oh, yeah. agree with me about it causes mass shootings. Yeah, and it's always it's always well you're making incels angry and you're spreading this and you're spreading that and it's like yeah really I'm really just trying to get people to see what's going on with themselves so that we don't so we don't so, keep so recreating these problems. Here's my favorite part: if if by some miracle Mackin or Date Psych ever watch this video, I want you to understand this. Go back and read the last chapter of the Evolution of Desire by David Buss. Specifically, yeah. what he states in there is there are people who attack him and state. Even if what you're saying is true, you shouldn't talk about it because it might be damaging to society. And his yeah. response is, it is better to know the truth so that we can work, we can become aware of what our internal evolutionary proclivities are so we can work through them. Okay? Yeah. So don't yeah. argue. Mackin, Mackin and Alex shouldn't argue with me. I'll argue with David Buss. Because yeah. these are truths. And even if you think, well, he's like, well, he's like why are you even concerned about this, bro? Like, when you say that, we're concerned because it's the truth. Objective truth exactly. is something you should be concerned about, even if it could in the short term have a deleterious effect. Are there some incels that are going to use these videos to, to, to propagate their ideas? For sure. Absolutely. But that's not yeah. the majority of people. It isn't the majority of people. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that was, um, I had a diagram for this. Somebody bought it. Somebody, sometimes people purchase sheets for me. I needed the money in the beginning. I had a, a, a diagram where I made a video about, there was this attractive woman in a car. She makes a lot of videos in a car and she was saying, why can't we all just remain diluted? Why can't we just stay to Lulu? Yeah. And I made a whole video about if you, if you don't, if you don't pay attention to the truth, about how to farm, then we don't get food. And if you don't pay attention to the truth about how airplanes fly, then they don't stay in the sky. And if you don't pay attention to the truth about your life, your life won't work either. If you don't pay attention to the truth of society, then society won't work either. The answer to the question, why do you care about this, is because the plane's falling out of the sky. Yeah. 
the objective reality, you have to eventually get to that point. But you, you, could, yeah. you make the argument that throughout our ancestral period, objective reality was more of a concern of the men who were hunting, building the fortification and protecting the yeah. tribe than it was for women who were emotionally caring for children and, you know, the, in the gathering society. I'm not saying women are like that now. I'm just saying through the majority, when people don't have this concept, grasp this, okay? This is mm -hmm. 200,000 years of homo sapien evolution and a lot of oh, this yeah. hominid evolution. So homo australis, homo habilis, these previous hominids that existed before homo sapiens did and by the way they're all dead and the reason why is because we're the most violent and most we're the most yeah. violent group of any of those hominids mm -hmm. and this over here is 15 years of facebook and what's happened is because of the recency bias you think that this is more real than this but this yes. is actually this is what's baked in a lot of people don't like that term baked in but this is what yeah. your evolution has put hardwired that your firmware is here and you can't just un rewrite it unless you are aware of it and if you're not aware yeah. of it that's what therapy does for some people becomes exactly. aware yeah. of these proclivities that you have are the only way you can surpass them you can transcend exactly them. exactly exactly and it's i mean it's a real mess like we're we're supposed to be moving higher in order to make society better and we're moving lower because everyone's addict addicted to technology. I went a really long time without getting a smartphone. And then when I got one, I just famously didn't use it when I didn't need to. And then when COVID happened, I was just on it every day because I was locked in my apartment. Mm. I had nothing to do. And I like, I get it now that for a long time I wasn't addicted to it, but I get it now that it's like you need to see what's going on in order to be connected. And then when you see what's going on, you don't have time to think about it before you move on to the next thing. When you get disconnected from stuff like there's a lot of people who ask me, do I know this person? Do I know that person? Do you, you know, are you aware of this and that thing? And I just, I haven't seen the movie and I don't know the, I haven't seen the thing. It, it's, it's the indulgence in, the, the everybody drowning in social media necessitates that you drown yourself in it too, or else you can't, you don't have anything to talk to them. Yes. About. If you're not watching the same shows and seeing the same things, if you don't know the same memes, then people just go, Oh, you're not even with it. And then you can't connect to people anymore. It's, it's a, uh, it's a situation that necessitates unhealthy behavior that brings down your ability to be objective about yourself. That you know, takes away your ability to understand what's going on in your mind. It's like, um, I mean, it almost seems like it was designed. You know, I, mm -hmm. I get conspiratorial pretty easily. It, it, it feels like it was designed by some alien or something to say, well, how do we make them not ever access the, the higher act, the parts of their mind? Well, let's give them something that necessitates that they exhaust their brain power on constant stimulation or else they can't fit in with each other. Yeah. In order to maintain relevancy, they have to participate in something that drags them down to lower levels of thinking. Yes. I mean, yes. The, 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 I don't think it's a conspiracy. I do think if you look at what China shows on TikTok in China versus what China shows on TikTok yeah. in the United States, it's very clearly different. And you could say, well, profit motive, whatever. I do think that there is a part of the Chinese population that likes the fact that, the, that their population is far more educated in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics than we are in the United States. Yeah. I think there's yeah. a part of them that like knows in the future, if we can just keep them bickering and watching stupid videos about cats that eventually they're going to get to a point where we will surpass them economically and on a world stage. And so I think yeah. that there you, people might want to look at that, but in order to do that, you have to, so it's, it's funny. I've seen this before. You ask a group of people, how many of you here think that the media fools lots of people and they'll all raise mm -hmm. their hand. How many of you yeah. here thinks the media fooled you and none of them yeah, no raise their hand. And it's just yep. like, bro, like you, because they don't grasp that their own bias. You should see people's, uh, I, I, Actually, I don't dislike Donald Trump at all, but the, the thing is, when you say, hey, you know, Donald Trump was raising money for Democrats in 2008, watch their brains melt. Like, they just can't yeah. conceive of, like, no, wait a second, this is, goes against my narrative. I'm yeah. fully open to ideas. Like, one of them, um, my girlfriend is more than 20 years younger than me. There's a, there's a study that shows that once you get past 20 years, it's a 178% increase in the likelihood of divorce. I would, yeah. you know, that's a, that's a thing that does not fit my narrative that I need to pay attention to. I'm not offended yeah. by it. It's new, it's a new data point I need to take in. And so that's, yeah. that's essentially what I wish we could all do. But the reason why is because I don't take data points in as personal attacks against me. Yeah. Yeah. And that's exactly, that's exactly, again, what I'm trying to get people to do is, is just because something is said or just because something is true, it doesn't mean that it's like I have someone saying observation bad here. This is an experience that I get a lot. I'll just say something like, hey, these are the facts. And people go, you're an incel. And it, it's it just 
it's like it, it's in an impenetrable wall of low level thought that I don't know how to get through. And, you know, the way that you just said that is it's a perfect demonstration of, OK, there is a fact. So I'm I like and this might be my reaction to it, but I have to put that away and look at the fact yeah. because I, I can't just go, oh, the world is whatever I want it to be. That's I'm hoping to figure out some way to make people embarrassed to be this. Right. Instead of exactly, yeah. yeah. Instead of doing any kind of yeah research, um, I, I have a question. Just again for my own personal curiosity, your belief sure. about so one of the places where I very much disagree with pickup artists and red pill people and all this kind of stuff is that mm -hmm. I do very much believe men and women can be friends if mm -hmm. men put women in the friend zone and not the other way around. Yep. I think it's very, very. In fact, if you do so, then you it, you can invoke mate choice copying because mm -hmm. women will see compliance from multiple. I mean, you've probably looked at my Instagram at some point. Yeah, like mm -hmm. they use. Uh, it, it, what will happen is you'll see compliance from multiple women will then get you more women, which will give you access to places with even more women, which, which will get you what you talked about being smooth. So I'm around yeah. women on a multiple basis. My voice inflection yep. doesn't change because I'm around women. I don't supplicate yep. to them or change my behavior. And number three, women introducing you to more women. When I talk to the most attractive women, I'll have them on here on my show, Access Vegas sometimes. When I talk to them, I frequently ask, where did you meet the last five guys you've had sex with? There's a common question I have, and it's usually... Yep. Uh, female friend, female friend, female friend, female friend, Instagram. It's never yeah. cold approach, pick up, date game at the fucking mall. And it's almost never, I met a super hot guy on Tinder. It's never those things. It's female exactly. friend, female, female friend, sometimes male friend, but he might be gay. And then Instagram. That's where they tend to meet these people. Yeah, exactly. And that is, uh, it's something that men just don't do. This is like, I don't know if you know anything about game theory, like that John yes. Nash, beautiful of course, mind yeah. movie. D read all about it. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great. So it, Men being friends with women is just isn't very common. I made a video recently about this this woman saying um, that whenever she's friends with a guy and he gets a girlfriend, he disappears because he was always interested in her. And I played a little a buzzer, you know, and I said, actually, men can be friends with women, but then women scream at us and say, what, like, are you still? Why are you still talking to women? I need you to not talk to women. Yeah. And. The thing is, I agree with her most of the time. Like, usually when a man is friends with a woman, it's because he's waiting for her to be available. I've been friends with women who were beautiful, who I really, really liked. And if they were not, uh, if they were interested in me and they were not in relationships or whatever was the wall was, I would be interested. I know how to, I know how to turn that off and not be quietly in pursuit of her. Yeah. I've done that. I know how to do that. I've had a lot of female friends that I don't want any sort of physical relationship with. I don't think most men know how to do that. Yeah. Yeah, because the first couple, you what happens is if you're living in any kind of scarcity, this has happened to me. You know, I have tons of female friends now, but I remember getting back from the Middle East. I did six months deployment to Al Yadid. And when I got back, I went to, um, in Atlanta, strip clubs are a little different. It, it, strip clubs and nightclubs, there's kind of a mesh. Same thing in Miami. There's kind of a, a, a hybrid of the two things. And I'm in there and I'm talking to this girl and I remember just fumbling, like literally mouth got dry. I hadn't spoken to an attractive woman in seven months. And the wow. woman almost like, said, I hope everything's all right with you. Like something, some sort of piteous remark. And I was just like, sure. because I was so uncalibrated to the situation, the opposite of smoothness. I love the, I like that yeah. term smoothness or, or game, if you want to call it stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Being used to what I like to say is immersion, the concept of in the U S military where they put you behind a berm and they fire live bullets over your head. So you get used Ooh, to yeah. hearing that whizzing noise. Your yeah. heart rate's at 140. The next time you do it, it's at 120. And then finally, your heart rate stays Sleep, at 83. Yeah. And you're like checking your phone while the bullets are going on. This is yeah. what happens once you see the hottest girl you've ever seen 50 times in Vegas. You get to the mm -hmm. point where it's like, she's super hot. I don't even look at her boobs once to have a conversation yeah. with her. I invite her to a couple events. Say, hey, do you want to come uh, support this animal rescue charity I'm doing? I go, like, hey, good. Let's exchange numbers. I go on. And then I notice she's watching every single one of my stories. Every yep. single one. And because why? Because I was still able to do those things at the bottom on your chart there. I was still able to yep. trigger attraction. Keep them up. Yep. But I did not show intent because my intent is valuable. You have to work for it. Yes. I, yes. I, be I believe in this concept of chiseling out the life you want by rewarding good behavior in your life from other people and punishing bad behavior. Punishing might not be the right word, or maybe not acknowledging bad behavior, not reacting to bad behavior. And when you yep. do that, that's really hard to do when a woman is super attractive to you and she's not giving you attention, then you go in and you try to fix the situation. Now she's giving mm -hmm. you less attention. You're making it worse because you aren't rewarding good behavior and punishing bad behavior, not creating right. those boundaries that a guy at the bottom there would have. Yeah, that's something that I... I 
you know, I've worked a lot on, uh, I have not had a lot of jobs. I have worked a lot on self-awareness and meditation and that sort of thing. I've moved up in, you know, what was called the levels in the aqua map. And that's something that I've learned to do without immersion. I just am aware of, and this is a skill that I try to teach people in my uh, uh, life coaching practice and in the videos. I'm aware of what's going on in myself subconsciously. And when I see a woman that I'm interested in, I'm aware of how I'm trying to, you know, purchase her interest with my, with investment and with, uh, you know, being nice. And I'm, I'm aware of those things coming up in me. And because I'm aware of it, I can just select which ones to do. So there's just no situation where a girl is so hot that I'm going to go, oh, uh, well, uh, what do I do? It's always just there are the right things to do and the wrong things to do. And I know what they are. Yeah. Yeah. You understand what right can, action can, is through repetition. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So I can just, I, because I know what they are, I can just select the right ones. And there's nothing to be nervous about because this is 100% the best way to get what I want. And I know that. And if I get it or not is up to her. Uh, the female delusional chart. Could we could we go over that real quick? I love the, the yeah. The, this is really great, and you because there's six different charts. I think you have up there, and I wanted to like kind of yes. get uh, an understanding because I'd never heard like the explanation piece by piece of what all these were. Sure. And so the, let me pull it up. The, it's all and, digital, and then also the dating out. down thing. That that was another thing I wanted to go over. That that dating was, down, that was dating down video is my probably my favorite one. It was, yeah, it was the funniest one. I got to focus more on funny. Yeah. I've been, I've been doing like uh, these kind of national geographic type. Here's what's going on in this situation. You need to, you need to make a t-shirt that says not people and then has like three arrows pointing I up. Do. It just says not people. I, yeah. I have that up on my, on my link tree. Uh, yeah. People have bought a little bit of that. Um, yeah. I, I really enjoy that one. Where is the, where is the dating down? Um, I've got to, I've got to pull that up on the computer. I don't know. I don't want to waste airtime. Oh, okay. Um, so that's not so that, yeah. the one with the dating down, but the delusional chart, you don't, you don't have a, a copy of that. I don't have a printed copy. I have to pull it up on the computer and then point my, uh, webcam at it. Oh, that's fine. That's fine. It's not a big so, deal. So yeah, it it'll just take, take me a, it'll just take me a minute. I don't, I don't know where it went. It's all out of order. Okay. There's, there's dating down. Okay. Yeah. The um, and, I remember uh, the government yeah. up there on the top, right? Yes, the the cycle of uh, it, it's not fair, and I need help, and now I'm getting help, and now there's no good men, and then the men have to work harder, and then that's not fair, and yes. that's um, I mean, very destructive. Yeah, you were talking yeah. about before about the distribution of wealth uh, from like men pay disproportionately higher taxes and women are more disproportionately the beneficiary of those taxes. And, yeah. and in some cases, women, by the way, I'm, my complaint is not women making more money. That's great. That's fine. My, my issue is then when no. you make more money and you are the majority of people who graduate from college, the cohort of men that you're that you would want to marry, they cannot compete. And right. because in society, what well, again, Dr. David Buss's 37 culture study, women are 100% more interested in a man's ability to procure resources than men are interested in a woman's ability to procure resources. And so because yeah. of that, that's the reason why when a women, when women make more money, they want men who make even more money than them. That's the reason why Rihanna would date a billionaire, even though she had all that money. And then yeah. the other, the contrapositive of that, or the other part of that, well, I thought it was interesting. I've never heard you talk about this, except for the younger thing is when men make made more money in all of these societies, the difference in age between them and their wife increases. So yeah. men, men would date the youngest women. The youngest women would go to the wealthiest men. That's an interesting concept. Of course. Yeah. It's just, it's, you know, the values express themselves more clearly in yep. certain situations. So yeah, the, the relationship of money to mating success is, it's really pretty straightforward. And yes. when you tell people about it, they just don't want to hear it. Yeah. Because it paints an unflattering picture of men and women. Men buying their affection and women selling it. That is that is a commoditization of it. And for some for some people, you'd w you want genuine desire. It's funny. I, I've had Dan Bilzerian's a friend of mine, and he's come on here. And he said, "I wish I could pay prostitutes, but I can't because I need women yeah. to be fucking into me." I, dude, I could just pay prostitutes and not do any of this. I did all yeah. of this because I want women to go nuts over me. And so yes. he talks about fame and jealousy creating this. And I'm, I'm, he lives real near here. I, I hang out at his place sometimes. And these women like watching them compete for him is one of the craziest things because mate choice. Copying is a theory to most people. So is sexy son's hypothesis. Watching mm. the most beautiful women you've ever seen fight for this dude is the craziest. Someday, uh, Home I hope to be able to take you over there so you can see it. It is crazy. That'd be great. Yeah. I accept. Yes. I, I preemptively accept. Beautiful. Uh, you want to so, move, move your camera up just maybe a quarter inch and then and then uh, sure. it's a little bit yeah, off center. I, so I can't see it. So tell me tell me when it's good. Is this uh, good? A little lower. Low, go lower. A little about lower. Two inches. 
Keep going. Right. Keep going lower. And keep going lower. Keep stop right there. Right there. Perfect. Okay. You got great. It. And then Oops. a little. No, that's a little too low. And then left. Move to the left about uh, a half an inch. That's it. Perfect. And then move down about half an inch. Down about. Okay. Move. Down about. Down. Pitch the camera down half just a smidge. An inch like that. That's it. Perfect. 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 Great. That was, we made it. Yep. I, can't, I can't see it. So yeah. Did you have any, uh, any specific questions about it? You want me to just run through did it? Go through, go through all nine of these. Okay. So basically the, the situation as I visualize it, which is this is based mostly on just, um, dating app data and, you know, the way that I see it happen in the real world too. You know, you go out to a bar or a club or whatever, and you just see women clustering around. And you see the familiar and unfamiliar. I think that's really important because I think that's where we get yeah. a lot of pushback here is people don't understand those are two different things. Exactly. So if women do not know you, if, if women are introduced to a room full of, um, you know, 100,000 men, like a stadium full of 100,000 men that they do not know, they're going to rate them in attractiveness like this. A lot of guys are just going to be totally invisible. I have this several stories that I tell about men who women don't even see as men. There was a couple of girls who... I was telling them about this a few years ago as I was formulating these ideas, and they said, oh, no, that's not true. We don't rate men unfairly. I pointed to a guy across the street, and I said, what about him? What would you? What number would you give him? And they said, what guy? And I said, there's one guy right there. Yes. And they were like, is he, is, is he behind the mailman? I said, no, the mailman. He's a guy. And they went, oh, I thought you meant, I thought you meant like a guy. I thought you meant like a guy. They didn't see him as being in the dating pool at all because he was low status. There was some study you mentioned before about where people, where women, when they saw unattractive men, there, there was like no neurochemical reaction. Do you I, remember? I looked, I looked for that. I did not find that study. Okay. It may have, it may be made up, Okay, but I, regardless, I have seen my, m most of my stories are when I was an Uber driver, yes. girls would talk like I was Wasn't there. not there. Uh, let me, they would just, yeah. I'll take it. I'll take it one step further. Not only do I agree with this totally from thousands of interactions anecdotally that these women, these men at the lowest, and this is the cashier at Walmart who checks you out. You ask the girl, like, what does he look like? And they never remember. Not only yep. is that true. I also believe that men climbing that scale isn't something they consciously like, uh, believe even exists. And the, yeah. I, I mean, the more attractive women, like what I mean is uh, Richard Cooper, um, Rich Cooper, he has a, a saying, he goes, women don't care about your struggles. They wait at the finish line and they fuck the yep. winners. So it's that's kind right. of the, kind of the situation where, cause my girlfriend will come over and I'll listen to them talking about like who they're attracted to. And the guy is just, hot or they have a connection and then you're like well what about all the things he put into like making himself hot or whatever and the concept of them baking things in and working on themselves to become yeah. more attractive doesn't it doesn't comprehend like male improvement doesn't like really comprehend to them and when you think about it it makes sense because if I were to tell you that there's a very unattractive woman and I was gonna say what can I tell her to say to you to make you want to have sex with her your answer would be obviously there's nothing she can say that's ridiculous right. and so women right. feel the same way that's why when also when women give advice about dating they're giving advice about men they're attracted to they're yes. saying buy her buy her flowers buy her flowers is something a man she's attracted to would do but not yep. average men because the concept of you not being attracted to a man and then being attracted to him is outside of their reality because attraction just happens right. and it's magical and it's made of destiny fairy dust and karma that's how attraction yep. happens for them yeah. it just happens but for us people who study evolutionary psychology, intersexual dynamics, or a guy who had bad game and then good game, we know that attraction is a formula that happens because of some of the best way I, I say the, those things that you had on the bottom of your scale there. Attraction is a formula. We must do the things in the formula and then yeah. we come out baked at the end and we finally got some fucking biceps and girls pay attention to us. Anyway, exactly. Go, go ahead, uh, show, show what you're showing here. Sure. So yeah, so the, the, the way that the elements of the chart work are that basically this is the most important one for men to know because women don't really need to, most of them don't need to change much about what they're doing. They just are who they are and men will like them or not, most of them. Uh, but if you are a man, you need to understand that if you don't know women and you are not super physically attractive or very high status, they're not going to recognize you as an option at all. If you get to know women by going to school with them and becoming familiar and being, you know, the class clown or be seeing her in church over and over again, once they know you, they start getting warm and fuzzy feelings and they go, oh, well, I didn't notice him before, but now that I know him, they begin to rate men more fairly, which is the same way that, um, that, what well, that, this would be the women rating men. This is the way that men rate women is the same way. When we see women just walking around unfamiliar, we rate them like, most of them are fives. There's a lot of fours and sixes. There's very few tens and ones, but women put almost all men below five. Like I think, believe it's 80%.
below five. Yeah. When you when you get to know uh, people, then women begin to rate men more fairly, which is why if you're not in the top 10%, that's your best strategy is to go to places where you see the same women over and over again, which is just repeatedly. Once again, know. get from an unfamiliar scenario to a familiar scenario. That's the yeah. advice, right? That's that's yeah. why we, I teach social circle exactly for this reason you're talking about right here. Yeah, exactly. See the same women over and over again Mere or exposure. and or yeah, and or figure out a way to make women really comfortable with you right away, like with jokes or humor or something. And um, that's, you know, the strategy. If you can't make it in the top 10% is get familiar with someone. I also have, you know, I split the way that men see women up into some men rate women low. If usually they, they either are doing very, very well in life or want to pretend they are. Yes. That's why I put fragile ego. So you'll see these guys that are just, they've got nothing going for them. And they'll look at a, at a picture of a model and go, like, she has pointy elbows. She's a two. Yeah. And you know, no one believes you that you can do better than that. And then you've got the anime fans who they, any woman with a pulse, they're like, Oh, she's amazing and beautiful. Men do both of those things. Some men underrate women and some men overrate women. But on average, men rate women pretty evenly, yeah. even when we don't know them. Women, on the other hand, rate men terribly when they don't know you and perfectly fine when they do. Yeah. I, I also, yeah. Yeah. You know, I was just going to say, like, I think men require less context in order to have sex. So they, the physical attractiveness is, is something that yeah. they could rate women on and then quickly know whether or not they're attractive. Anyway, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. We see the physical attractiveness and we go, you're, you're in, right? Yes. And then, and then when we get to know you, if you're terrible, then you might fall out. But usually women are not you know, that you know, I'm going to say this real quick. That is a, that is a, a point of growth. I think yeah. when I was 22, it didn't matter what a bad person she was. If yeah. she was fine, you were just like, yep. there's a point in men's life, good or bad, where they go through this, a lot of times it's college where it's like, have sex with more attractive women and do whatever mm -hmm. I need to do to get to where I'm yep. having sex with more attractive women. And I yep. do not care about if she's a Republican, cleans her house, has a job as a butcher. These things don't matter yeah. to me. Later on, I think it's a, per, uh, a situation of development and maturity. I remember one girl specifically telling me her last three boyfriends were exes. One girl re repeatedly telling me that she actually liked when her boyfriend hit her, stuff like that. I was like, these things yeah. turned me off. And that's when I was yeah. like, I'm growing because even though she's physically attractive, things that are outside of her physical attractiveness are now affecting my rating towards her. But I think you need to have to have some experience with women before you get to that point. Yeah. You gotta be, you have to develop yourself to some point. So you don't just see women as things that yes. are just, it doesn't matter what's inside her mind. She looks good or doesn't look good. It's, it's a developmental issue. I believe. Um, I was lucky enough to be able to do that pretty early in life. Like before I was done with college, I had some pretty rewarding relationships with some, you know, really mid, maybe below mid women. It was just like, well, she's really cool. So I, I, you know, glad to have learned that early. Um, but yeah, it's a developmental issue. The, um, the, the rest of the chart just to, uh, to finish it off. Th these are sort of kind of a joke. Like these are to be taken seriously. And this is everything I do has some humor in it, or most of the things I do has some humor in it. Th the humor is here. The women rating themselves. I know that there are some women that are good looking that think that they're, you know, they have low self-esteem. I meet them. But the joke I'm making in is that, that no one wants to think that they're less than average. And when you ask women, what would you rate yourself? They're always saying seven, eight, nine, ten. It just seems so common. And it's a general principle, I think, that women, especially in the information age, have their egos so inflated that if you ask them, well, where are you? They're going to say, I'm way high up because I get all this attention. And where are men? They're way high down. If you superimpose these things on each other, you see how ugly the situation is. All the women think they're here, or most of them think they're here. And then the, all the women think the men are here. So they're all like this huge bubble of women is competing for this tiny sliver of men. All yeah. the time. And so why, that's like, that's the explanation for why things are so bad. And of course, there's some exceptions, but I left them off. Um, uh, go yeah. ahead. Go ahead. Finish the last one. Oh, yeah, sure. And then the women rating uh, uh, themselves would be here. Women rating other women privately would be me. And I don't know if you can see this, my besties. <laughs> they always love themselves and their friends. And they go, we are awesome and we're great. Just like this. It's, it's a group you know, greatness. And then everyone else is down here. Oh, that bitch. And then women rating women in public. Everybody is 10. Just put everyone at 10. Yes. Yeah, definitely. Uh, one of the misconceptions I want to go over, uh, Mackin said this on the show, and I'm just going to say he is absolutely wrong about this. It is yep. the idea that these panel shows are deliberately choosing women who call themselves tens. That yeah. isn't 
true. It yeah. apps the the idea that there is some deliberate, either negligent or nefarious necessity to get women who overrate themselves on these shows is not true. I know yep. Chris Poxon, who does it for Fresh and Fit. I know fucking uh, Sergio Solis, who does it for Purple Pill. I know mm -hmm. fucking Brian Atlas, who does it for, and, and his friends that do it for uh, fucking whatever. And I yep. book all the girls for Access Vegas, and we specifically, I specifically try to get as many master's degrees, girls who don't have OnlyFans, and girls who are married or girls who have kids on my show as I can. And the answers are the same. Yep. Because those answers yep. are not flattering to his narrative, he has to say that there's a bias in the way they're choosing. The only bias is one, the girls are on Instagram because the most of the recruiting is done mm -hmm. through Instagram. If yep. you want to say that the majority, like for, for the idea that the majority of women right now who are in the dating market aren't on Instagram is false. The vast mm. majority of them are. So I don't yeah. think that that's a bias. Is there some bias? Yes. Like I would say extroversion versus introversion. Definitely. Definitely more girls who are extroverted would want to come on the show. Is there yeah. a bias where women who are sex workers are more likely to come on the show to get more viewers? Yes. I oh, yeah. will agree with that. That's why we try to control for that. And I actually think Brian Atlas does a good job of trying to control for that too on yeah. his show. The thing with Fresh and Fit is they do three shows a week with 10 girls each. And they've had yeah. 2,000 women on there. So they can't control for it the same way. And they're yeah. in Brickle. But the idea that there's somehow some inherent deliberate bias is not true. It is absolutely categorically false. What, now, here's, here's what I'll find. It, here's the actual answer if, if Mackin were ever interested in, in learning this. My, my, my girlfriend sat next to me one time and, and uh, Rolo said, hey, ladies, I'll rate yourself. My girlfriend mm -hmm. is, you know, she's um, a, a, a championship bikini model. She went on yep. there and she goes, I'm like a six and a half or a seven, which is absurd, but I didn't say anything. Yeah, and because she said she was a six or a half and a seven, we started getting very fair ratings from all 10 girls. What I found is that if the first girl says she's a six or a seven, yeah, you I'm don't get all 10s. But if the first girl says she's a 10, all the girls say they're 10s. That's yeah. what happens on the panel show. That's the actual bias you're looking for. It's not that the, that the panel shows are deliberately trying to make women look bad or looking for women who are mentally unstable deliberately to make men, women in general look bad. I will tell right. you as somebody who has to book girls for these shows, that is not even 1% true. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, I, I can. That's like the line test. Do you ever did you ever hear about that? No, the um, they they would um, they would just draw different length lines and they would do a, a, a blind experiment where there would be some people who were in on it. And uh, and some people who were not. And oh they yes, like, this is a, line, the, line. you have the Confederates. Yeah. yeah, so they did this with military officers too. Like people would come yep. in and say, "No, these lines are the same length." And if enough people said it, yeah, then then people would start agreeing that the lines were the same length. Yes, exactly. Yeah, the right. person yeah. the person that you're testing is like fourth in line, and the first three people say this line is longest, and then this person goes, "Well, I guess it is." Yeah. And it's the social pressure. And it's the same thing with you have people stand backwards in an elevator, and people get in, and they go, "I guess we're standing backwards." Yeah. And it's, yeah, that's sort of the same thing. That, I, I've that, actually, I've actually seen the same thing where we have groups of girls yeah. together. Bulzarian talked about this. Like you have a group of girls and then one of them starts like getting on the table and dancing naked. Then they mm -hmm. all just start doing it. It is yep. a crazy thing. Like, again, you don't have to initiate Wacky. it. The girls will do it for you. Um, yeah. one, of my, one of my favorite ones uh, you talked about real quick, uh, the white knight cuck enabler. Do you remember this? Yeah. This, this video was terrific. And yes. to be fair, when I hear these guys who are just ad hominem making attacks against you without listening to all your content, that is mm -hmm. what, like, in my mind, I just want to tell them, I just want to take them private and be like, dude, they're still not going to fuck you. Like no matter yeah. how many of these videos you make, dude, girls are not gonna want to have sex with you just because you made videos. They're not gonna video. like you for it. They're not gonna like you because the anti ho math video, bro. I promise you, it won't work. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that was a very fun video. I'm hoping to make. I'm hoping to get more um, comedy like that. I don't think I have a drawing that goes along with it. But yeah, it was this. It was a this Scottish guy who has just video after video where he's like getting down on one knee and pr proposing to this Scottish woman and just going, "I promise to protect you, to love you, to cherish you." And, and it's just like, it's just like, you know, average female worship. It's the same, it's the same principle behind, um, what, what is it called? The vampire thing, um, with the girl from Washington, Bella, the tw twilight, 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 it's the same principle where she's supposed to be like, they hired a gorgeous girl to play the, you know, character, but she's supposed to be just some average girl. Yes. And then, um, mystery monster from the past who's there's only two of in the world shows up and says, you are who I pick. So yeah. it's like, you're in the middle, but the super guy is coming to pick you. 
it's yeah, the, the same. It's, it's the it's same. Fifty principle. Shades of Grey. The, the Anastasia yeah. Grey is is described as being very average, and the yeah. guy she's with is like you know a billionaire with a ten inch penis. Like that's yeah. essentially yeah. yeah. Same thing. Uh, if you watch uh, True Blood, you'll know the the actress who plays Sookie Stackhouse. She's a really you know she's a great actress. But Anna Pankwin is like all the men in the show are outrageously good looking. And she mm-hmm. is supposed to be somewhat average. And the same thing happened with Bella. And like Bella was pretty enough to where she didn't intimidate women. Same thing if you look mm-hmm. at Grey's Anatomy. Same thing happens mm-hmm. there uh, where yeah. uh, she, the, the woman who plays uh, 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 Grey, I forgot what her first name is. She's not as hot as McDreamy and all the other men. The men are outrageously yeah. good looking on the show and the women aren't. And the reason why is because, again, because of the fantasy that you're describing here. Yeah. And I, I wish that women would fantasize about average men, but they just don't when like, I think every man has had the same fantasy of, you know, most of us are in this middle range and you meet someone at school or at work and it's like, oh, she's exactly on my level. And that's like the hottest thing ever. That's exactly who I want. And that's something that we fantasize about. Women do not do that with guys that they just meet. They just, they, it's always six foot five mafia boss. You know, it's always ancient vampire billionaire <laughs> it, 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 that's that's where their fantasies are going yeah and that's where their fantasies stay until they are very comfortable with you and they know who you yeah. are Hybr- hybristophilia is something that only occurs in women and does not occur in men and this is like yeah. women going after richard ramirez or ted bundy like being attracted yeah. to them sending them their panties offering hands mm-hmm. of marriage same thing that happened with um charles manson that thing is only goes in one way and not another and again let's go back to evolution why is that a man willing to do large amounts of violence on your behalf is probably a good pe- a good bet yeah. for you yeah. and so that's why you would have irrational levels of attraction what the one video you have where the girl's like every time i hear a guy's a felon my brain just comes out of my ear <laughs> We, we, yep. We've done two shows in the last month, and we asked the women one time. We had nine girls on. Six of them said that they had dated a felon. Last time we had yep. six girls on, four of them said that they had a felon. So we're, we're about 66% of these women are saying they have previously dated a felon. Yeah, it makes it really sound great becoming a felon. It's like, what, <laughs> what can I do that I you can get probation You've been on Tinder, uh, two-time felon. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. exactly. Could it's you like, imagine? That, that, I, I, I could easily imagine. Um, that's what, like, that's one of the things I advise men to do. Um, I, again, I mean, I, I hate to break him up so much. I, I hope he doesn't think I'm beating up on him, but Mackin, I talked to Mackin about it. He doesn't like that. I advise men to cultivate, cultivate dark triad traits. And I'm hoping to explain that more soon. But what I really mean by it is you should be able, like, if you want to attract women, you should be able to behave in a way that like telegraphs and communicates that you are willing and able to do those things that women sure, are, sure. are hybristophilically attracted to that they're that that make them think ooh he's mysterious and he's you know powerful and Dangerous. he's willing to do this terrible thing you should look like seem like you're capable of doing that and willing to do that and the best way to do that is to actually be ready like the, what I did to myself is I just sort of accepted the fact that I might end up in a situation where I might have to do something serious yeah I accepted that a long time ago, and then I ended up in situations where there were guys, like when I was living in the city and hanging out with a girl, there was a guy who would make trouble, and I would be more trouble. And then the girl would go, that was hot. And you you just it just pops right out so fast that when you go dark, they like it. Yeah, I, I I agree with you, and I agree with Mackin. And the I don't think people in the red pill space, manosphere, anywhere are saying. Uh, not granted, there are definitely guys in the pickup community who are saying this, and some red yeah. pill guys who are specifically encouraging men to take on dark triad traits. And Mackin yep. pointed out that it is mostly the narcissistic uh, tri- uh, triad traits. Yes. Sociopathy. If you're a, like a true sociopath and you're a man, it's you have to be really good looking or really good at something in order to get away with mm-hmm. it. Um, of course. As far as being a borderline personality disorder as a man, you kind of come off as a bitch because you you're super oh, yeah. high and super low, and you're constantly. If you ever, if you guys have ever That's met a dude uh, who's constantly threatening to kill himself and but never kills himself, yep. I know this one girl. It, it's actually a girly the, same, disorder, yeah. the same girl who ended up, uh, you know, with the the machine gun Kelly. She ends up dating mm-hmm. this guy. He goes off in the woods with his truck, with a bottle of pills, a gun, a knife all these different ways of killing himself. And I was like, I guarantee you he won't kill himself. I'll bet you any amount of money you want. He slits his mm-hmm. th- wrist the wrong way. He takes a couple of pills. They pull him out of the, uh, the, the ambulance or whatever. And then she gets back with him. That is, mm-hmm. that is borderline personality disorder. That's what they're, they're doing. No, it's mostly Absolutely. narcissism. And I agree with you that teaching, teaching the dark triad traits 
is not a good idea for men, which is why I said before the Mm pre-selection one, what happens Mm -hmm. is a guy who's a narcissist and a guy who has boundaries, they kind of have a few things in common in that they both have boundaries. And though, if you can adopt those things, you can be incredibly attractive to women on the bad boy scale without doing the, the dark tryout things. And at the same time, I will admit to you, I've met several guys, especially here in Vegas, male strippers, VIP hosts who have the dark triad traits and are incredibly good with women. So you can be good with women with the dark triad traits, but we should have a responsibility to not tell men to do that. I agree with Mackin on that. Sure. So, I mean, I, I'm, I'm not sure if I articulated it properly, but I'm not saying that men should go around just, of you know, a- actualizing that kind of behavior yes. and, and being a psychopath and treating people that way. But specifically, like, I don't, walk around behaving like that. But when situations show up where it would be beneficial for me, I'm able to turn it on. And the women being able to see that is what triggered it. The appreciation for it, that I, that I can just go empathy free in a, in a moment. It's not walk around and be empathy free and mistreat people. It's just get your mind to a place where you know that like life is real. And you might have to do something real one day. Yeah. And if you can, if you can live in that mindset, that's something that like, there was a girl who, when she saw me do that, when she saw me, you know, almost snap at a guy, she talked about other guys she dated and how they would not do that. And it frustrated her. And she said they were, they would always just say, oh, he's just a poor guy and he's uh, affected and we should care about him. And she's like, got an ick for it. Yeah. Absolutely. So there's, yeah, there, there are lines between when you, when you actualize the traits, I'm not saying be a narcissist. Yes, of course. That's, yeah. ir- that's irresponsible. Even though we know it to be true, that's irresponsible. Sure. Again, understanding how to use plutonium, uranium, and tritium to build a nuclear bomb is the truth. You sure, understand a sure. truth, but it's not responsible to go off and not encourage people to use it. But yet it's sure. still like, so, so both things can be true. Um, but, but sure, we, sure. We're running, we're running out of time here. A couple things. Uh, first off, I really hope we can do this again. If you need any help with live stream yeah. stuff, I would love to MC something for you. Get like a bunch of people yeah. on screen so that you can do, uh, sure. do your stuff. I would love to be a part of that. What I want to ask you is a couple things for you mm-hmm. personally in the future. I'm you're, you're going to make some more money. I'm telling you that right now. AdSense stuff I'm on sure. TikTok. You're going to be, I promise you that book that you got right there in front of you, you're going to be able to sell that thing for 50 grand at some point, that whole thing, yep. right? Somebody's going to yep. buy that from you. Um, I think you, you're on the way up. In doing Mm -hmm. that, also your dating life, and you've mentioned this before, how do you intend on doing this? Because there's a level of secrecy. Is she going to know that deep down you're also Batman? Is she going to know your home half? Like how how do you plan on going socially for, because I think eventually people are going to figure out, the Reddit groups or whatever, they're going to figure out who you are if you have social interactions in these debates. How do you plan on dealing with this in the future? I'm tired. I am really tired. <laughs> I have had a lot of experiences and they like they they have ended in exhausting ways. Yeah. Right now I am not trying. I am not going out. The only interactions that I'm having with women are women who contact me through the channel mm. and I just wait to see what she's got to offer TikTok, and if I like which, her. Which channel? YouTube? Through well through TikTok and YouTube and re- really anywhere. Okay. Women will say women will will reach out and they'll say Sometimes they'll be very direct and they'll go like, your voice is good or something. And Mm -hmm. sometimes they'll be indirect and they'll go, I had a question for you. And then they kind of sneak it in later that, you know, they're interested. And I just, you know, run through, well, who are you and where are you from and how old are you? And like, uh, is, do you, do you have what I'm looking for? And, um, I just, if I ever get to a point where she looks like the right deal for me, I guess I would just say, well, here's who I am and where I live and let's do it. I think that's really the the only thing I'm even willing to do right now. I don't think I'm even willing to go down the street and talk to someone at the bar. I am just tired. I need, I need to rest after the past few years. All right. So what we'll do is we're going to have a a competition. We'll have all the ladies meet up in Vegas and we'll have them like, we'll do the reveal there. How about that? Who wants to date my home math? Let's do that. I mean, what, how, what, what level of reveal? Am I going to be public? Am I face public? Or maybe maybe face public. I don't know. We don't have to do that. I do. I would. Okay. Hey, by the way, I would love for you to come. I'm a former U.S. military officer. Promise. Got a yeah. top secret clearance. If you come out here to Vegas, I'll take you out wherever. Never going to tell anybody who you are. Okay. Don't worry about All that. Right. If you ever want to come. In fact, you could do a show in here it. and we would just keep you like off screen over here the whole time if you ever wanted to do one. Okay. That would be fantastic. If yeah. you ever, if I you ever want to come out to Vegas, dude, I'll take you out, show you out uh, wherever you want to go. Uh, 
for me, I like whenever I'm going to meet a girl like that. In a per- the first time, I like to do it in a social situation with lots of people around. So that's why I was <laughs> I was mentioning you know coming out here for one of the events. Uh, anyway, man, awesome. Um, where what do you have coming up in the future? Um, I mean, I just. <laughs> It, it's been it's been a tornado. It's been a few a fast few months. Uh, I went from you know zero to three hundred and seventy thousand on TikTok and zero to one hundred sixty six thousand or one hundred seventy thousand on YouTube in three months. And I am I'm making content. I'm establishing you know what it is that I do, getting my basic content out. I just moved and everything's a disaster. I'm just gonna be I'm gonna be hunkering down making content and making sure that I'm getting income and making sure that I'm spreading my name and getting established. What's coming up for me is more of the same, better, more frequent, you know, more lives, more interacting with people, and more getting myself established so that uh, so that I'm really rooted in the scene and you know I have a, a, a territory and I know what I'm doing. That's just the next six months to a year for me. I love it. Are you gonna start posting more on Instagram? I am going to, yeah. I'm planning on getting uh, Instagram and Facebook and putting all my content on there. It sounds like um, it sounds like a very great avenue for me. Nice, very nice. Yeah. All right, man. We'll talk offline, man. I got a bunch of stuff. If you if you're interested, yeah. as far as my coaching business, uh, all the things that we've learned over the last two years, we've got up to uh, you know mid mid six figures a month now, and so yeah. there's a, you know a bunch of stumbling blocks that we went through as far as that's concerned. I know you're going to do some coaching, so I'm excited to see that. Yeah. Where can everybody find you? Um, you can find me on TikTok and YouTube. And that's H O E underscore M A T H. And I have a link tree in my bio on each of those places. And that's where you're going to find my everything that I'm doing. Everything. If you want to contact me, I have contact form. If you want life coaching, it'll be back up at some point. Right now, I've got to do all this stuff with moving. But everything that I do is on the link tree. So find me on TikTok and YouTube. And if you want more than TikTok and YouTube, Click the link tree and find my stuff in there. Hey, by the way, what Mackin said about, you know, doing the life coaching and he would do it, you can do it with me, 100%. Okay. We can we could, awesome. we could live stream the whole thing if you want. I'm an open oh, book, be, brother. That'd be great. Yeah. Awesome, man. Hey, hope to yeah, talk awesome. to you soon. Let's do a live stream right. here at some point in the future, man. Let me Let's know when you're it. free. Uh, I do a Monday one every other week. We could have, it's a Zoom, so we'd have, actually have people come on. You can see their face instead of Super Chats, and they'll ask you questions if you're interested yeah. in doing that. And uh, I'd love to talk yeah. to you again, man. This is great. All right. I had, I had a great time. Thank you for having me. All right, man. I'll talk to you soon, guys. That's Hope Math. Make sure you check him out on Instagram, TikTok, all over the place. And we will see all of you next week.